Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hellraiser The Dark Watch. This is the entire, complete, comic read-through of Hellraiser The Dark Watch. This is something which I've been doing here over the past, well, a couple of weeks, maybe even months now, here on the channel. Uh, and if you've missed it, well, here's your chance to watch it in full. It is a, a, a dramatization, an audiobook, whatever you want to call it, motion comic. So I hope you enjoy it. Dive right into it and check back every Monday, Wednesday and Friday for the continuation of this story. Because yes, I will be continuing as there are more stories and there's actually one which follows on from this. What's your pleasure, sir? The box, of course. What else would I be here for? A man holds up some cash, gives it to the bum, and he sits in a darkened room and plays with the box. His fingers touch the intricate patterns and the gold inlay begins to shine. He moves his fingers once more, persuaded by the light, the dark delights he has so been promised. And it moves, it shifts, it opens up and a beam of electricity shines on his face. Ah, yes. There. And in the dark room, the wall cracks open. A gust of wind cools him, pulls him down the dark corridor that he sees now before him. Uh, hello? Hello? Is there anyone in there? He walks forward. I was... I was told there would be a welcoming party. Uh, Alright. Fine. He sees no one in the corridor. Fine then. The Lord helps those... Etc. Etc. And he puts on his suit jacket. And walks down into the darkness. As he reaches the end, he sees a gateway, horrors, chains, a room, a man obliterated. Mm. The damned are here. But where are all the demons? And he continues down, a man with purpose, seeking out the Cenobites. Hello? His words echo off the corridors of the labyrinth. And then someone comes up behind him, a familiar voice. Hello. What's going on here? When I sold the box, I was told a group of Cenobites would exit hell to greet me. You know of our order and our devotions. And yet, you came here of your own free will. Who are you? Who seeks hell with open eyes? It's the female Cenobite. I'm... A theologian. I've studied hell all my life. Now I wish to see the truth of it. You reek of sin, theologian. You hardly needed to seek out hell. You would have reached here sooner or later. Oh, I'm afraid it would have been sooner. Liver cancer, you see. I always did enjoy wine a touch too much. I only had a few months to live. Better to leave while the party's still going and come here on my terms. Female walks off and calls to him. Indeed, come then. We have such sights to show you. This is the pit. And they stand before the mighty pit of hell. The fleshy lumps of the damned down below them. God in heaven, these are the damned who came here the old-fashioned way, yes? Souls who died in sin, rather than opening a puzzle gate like I did. Why the difference? Why torture some of the damned in the labyrinth but leave the rest here? For most, being in hell is punishment enough. Their sins are banal 
their desires commonplace. We pluck only the juiciest sinners for special attention in the labyrinth. Is this my fate then? Eternity in the pit? Strange that I'd be disappointed to find out I wouldn't be tortured. I, I suppose I felt my sins were special. I'm aware of them. The damned have grown restless following recent events. Watch out! Three souls begin running behind the man and female. They wield weapons. They spotted us! Go now! For Captain Spencer! He wields a scythe. He brings it up, ready to cut the man's throat. <laughs> and the chains obliterate him. Michael! Jesus, Michael! Spencer is many things, the female says. Saviour is not among them. I speak as one who knows. Everyone feels their transgressions are unique, theologian. But no, you aren't bound for the pit. Your fate lies elsewhere. When we last saw Kirsty Cotton and Elliot Spencer, Leviathan had placed them in an orb. The same orbs that the man now stares at. Where are we? What are these balls? Hell's tortures are many. Some are of the body, but others are of the mind. And as she says that, we see inside the orb, Kirsty Cotton and Elliot Spencer. Savor the pain, Kirsty Cotton. It will be the last sensation you'll ever truly feel. Kirsty Cotton stands there, lacerations on her skull, pins being planted in. She's reliving the moment she became the High Priestess of Hell. But she notices something. Wait. Wait, there's someone here. There is no one here, Kirsty. Just you, me, and Leviathan. Shut the fuck up, Spencer. Someone's here, invisible, and watching. She can see the man. Oh. Ah, who are you? Little ghost. You aren't supposed to be here. This isn't... Uh, this isn't how it happened. This isn't... This isn't real! We've done this before, we... And then the female Cenobite knocks the orb out of the man's hand and puts it back down. That was... unwise. You could have become trapped inside the memory sphere alongside those it imprisons. Those it... That was Elliot Spencer and Kirsty Cotton, Hell's last two high priests. If they're trapped here, who's ruling Hell? None of this makes sense. I expected to learn about Hell from the end of a meat hook. Not to have a guided tour with a Cenobite as my Virgil. What's changed here? Perhaps you require a different perspective on the question. As she walks up the stairs to look over the labyrinth, that's... that's Leviathan. The god your your order worships. Patron of order and pain. To see it with my own eyes. Yes, it truly is an honour to gaze upon the lord of the labyrinth. What's that coming towards us? The new Cenobite army. Leviathan's crusaders. What? The, the Cenobites are on the march? Then, this hasn't been a tour. It's been a briefing. Hell is recruiting, isn't it? Your questions are so many, but all have one answer. No Cenobites took you by force when you opened the gateway, for that has been deemed entrapment now. Souls must walk into Hell of their own free will. You see, Hell is... What are your words? Under new management. Oh, yes, I see, well. 
Damore. That's... That's Harry Damore. I never thought I'd see the day. T Private detective turned exorcist turned... Lord of Hell? That's quite the career path, Harry. Marchetti. And here we see Harry Damore. Sat atop a skinless beast, a warhorse. Hell's warhorse. This is the new priest of hell. This man is an assassin. Soldiers, protect me. Priestess, what the fuck are you doing bringing this killer right to me? My lord, he claimed to be a theologian. He's a theological assassin. Daru Marchetti, a.k.a. the Cankerist. I ran into him in New York one time when I was hunting a chachat. His order, the Via Crucis, they're supposed to take their orders directly from the Vatican. Or maybe from Pandemonium. But if he's here to kill me, that answers the question of his allegiance. Oh, don't be simple, Harry. There are many hells. Of all people, you should know that. You used to fight the gulfs, not serve them. And in fact, I'm here to send a message about that. And he pulls out a blade. But with that, instantly, the female centipede sends hooks and chains. But they don't do anything. They just bounce off him. A force field of protection surrounds this man. Please. I took you for professionals. Pay me the same courtesy. Cenobites surround the man. Each with their individual weapon. One strikes down. But it's no use. The force field is there, strong, holding. And with that, he sends his blade through the skull of the beast. And into another, down they go. He hacks another skull. Crusaders, withdraw now. He's protected. Would I walk in here if I wasn't? This talisman renders me immune to hell's influence. The man holds up what looks like rosary beads with a crucifix on the end. But in an instant, bullets purge through his flesh and the talisman falls. Harry's holding the gun. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, a, a gun? The entirety of Hell's power at your fingertips and you still won't part with your tiny pistol? It gets the job done. How about we get this over with so I can get back to my work? Gladly. He charges with a blade. The female steps in. A hook on a chain rips through his hand. He drops the blade now into his other. Harry! Damn you, Damore! Harry summons a chamber. There's plenty for everybody. Female, using the chains, pushes him, propels him along into the chamber. You honestly think you're the one in control here, Damore? You're a puppet, and Leviathan's pulling your strings. Think, Harry. Why would Leviathan choose you? The chamber begins injecting him. His blood flow changing. A bargain basement detective, a second, second-rate demon hunter, as the new high priest of hell. Leviathan has reasons, Damore. It's... It's playing you. Ah! Finally, I thought he'd never shut up. And as the chamber opens, a new Cenobite emerges. A new entry to Hell's ranks. There, an assassin sent to murder you. Only to swell the ranks of Hell's new army. But one thing puzzles me, Damore. The uprising that Captain Spencer caused among the damned souls has been quelled. So then, what is this new army for? And we cut to the room where the man had sat. The box shines. The gold flows on a hand that's reached down to pick it up. The bum. He looks at it. 
and a voice comes out of nowhere and disturbs him. Put the box down. You think you want the box. You think you want to solve it. But you don't. It's Tiffany. My name's Tiffany. I opened a box like that once. Take it from me, you really don't want to. She doesn't recognise the bum. She's never seen him before, but we have. We know who this is. We know he serves hell. Do you want money? I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. But one way or another, she pulls out a gun, we can't let you leave here with that. And then he changes. Mutating, eyes popping out his skull. What? What? What, what the? Jesus Christ! It's the Lament Configuration Guardian. The fleshless dragon, the serpent of hell. It has the box in its hand. And all Tiffany can say is, shit. Call me Tiffany. The nurses at the Chenard Institute did. They had to call me something. And I didn't talk much. Not after what Dr. Chenard did to my mom. Chenard wasn't a garden variety psychopath. He was obsessed with hell and with opening hell's doors. He used me to get his wish. That was the first time I went to hell. I've been back several times since. I would have died that first time. But you saved me, Kirsty. That's where my life really started. And this is where it ends. For my friends and for me. We see Tiffany on the floor and the Lament Configuration Guardian approaching. The skinless, fleshless, serpent beast from hell. Ready to attack. And she sighs. Still. I can't help thinking. It makes this afternoon not seem so bad. We cut to a flashback of Tiffany and a group of friends. They've slaughtered someone, or Tiffany has. Jesus, Tiffany. You, you fucking executed him. You shot him in cold blood. Have you looked around? I just gave him what he wished for. A trip to hell. Tiffany, we're here for the gates to hell. That doesn't mean, Theo, look around. This guy's a full-on collector. If we took his hell gate from him and let him live, he'd just find another gate. Oh, yeah, yeah, you sure? So that's why you killed him, yeah? Not, not for some other reason? Like because he reminded you of somebody else? We see Chenard, what would become the Doctor Cenobite, and his lament configurations, his hell gates encased. We cut back to Tiffany. Let's get out of here before the cops show up. We, we got what we came for. We used to smash the puzzles that open hell's gates, thinking it had closed them. Turned out we were, well, we're doing the opposite. So now we get the gates out of circulation. It's not a permanent solution, of course, but we didn't know what else to do. We didn't know what else to do story of my life these days. We see a safe in a wall. Numerous puzzles confined there, with Lamartian's configuration etched in them. Isn't anyone going to talk about what just happened? What's the talk about? Norton, you... You got anything to say about this? I have no problem with targeted killings. Yep, yeah, alright, spoken like a spook. But I do have a problem with sloppy killings. We don't have official permission to sanction people, remember? I'd rather not end up in jail. Edward Norton, former spy. He was a player in the almost apocalypse last year, in some government capacity. When the world didn't end, he resigned and came and found us. And how about you, Jeeves? Please, 
Tell me you see the problem here. Andrew's concern goes doubly for me. Rajiv's from India, but he's Oxford educated, hence Theo's pet name for him. He won't talk about his backstory with the Cenobites, but we can guess from the way he plays with his wedding band every time they get brought up. His wedding band, which he wears on his right hand like a widower. How the fuck am I this group's moral compass? I'm a fucking criminal for God's sake. Theo was a purse thief here in New York. One day he stole a bag with a door to hell inside. What a motley crew. We have nothing in common except hell. And Harry Damore, a private investigator with a knack for the occult and for networking. He got us all together. Rajiv and I never even met the man. Theo likes to call us Harry's angels. Harry Damore. Missing. Presume damned. We've been working out of his office since... Well, for the last year. Since he disappeared alongside Hell's former high priest. Elliot Spencer. And you... Curse thee. The phone rings. Let it get a voicemail. You're busy. I need to take it. It's Norma. She's probably had another vision. Hey, Norma, what have you got? A migraine. From all these damn ghosts yammering at me. Speaking of things I inherited from Harry. There's Norma Payne. Her psychic gifts didn't come with an off switch. So she drowns out the voices of the nagging dead with an OD of TV. You sure it's not from 20 TVs playing toddlers in tiaras? Nah, definitely the ghosts. They're extra whiny today. Listen, Tiffany, somebody's about to use a puzzle box uptown in the Bronx. You're gonna have to hurry. It may be too late already to keep him from opening it. But you be careful for me. We cut to Tiffany approaching the bum holding the puzzle box. And as he turns, shedding his skin, his disguise, into the lament configuration, Guardian. I've got a bad feeling about this one. And Norma was right. She was right to be concerned. The beast approaches the four standing against hell. What the fuck? Norton, watch out! As the Guardian slashes its wing. Everybody, run! We weren't prepared for this. Cenobites can't be killed unless they're inside the glyph of the Salutant. The magic circle which we didn't draw. And that's for killing Cenobites. Who knows if it'd work? The Guardian smacks Rajiv out of the way. His guts fall out. Oh no. Sorry, Rajiv. I hope now you'll find some peace. The group runs. But Tiffany's smart. She holds the box. Hey, you looking for this? She runs. She's got his attention. Shit, shit. Wrong turn. No doors, no windows. Just... Oh, closet. This... This is it. No way out. But like a light switch, Tiffany has an idea, an epiphany. Except one. She begins to play with a lament configuration. Like riding a bicycle. I never thought I'd open one of these again. But I'm trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. But if I'm going to be cliche about it, better the devil you know. She opens the box. The wall opens. She walks inside. Upon crossing the threshold, she closes the box. Gotcha. As the lament configuration guardian is looking through the door. But the dimensional gate, the portal between hell and earth, closes and an almighty screech ensues as the portal snaps its neck. Skull now in hell. As for Rajiv. Never even got to find out what his story was. <coughs> T.
Tiffany is interrupted by clapping. And who walks down the stairs but the new high priest of hell? It's Harry Damore. I knew you were a badass, but I wouldn't have laid money on you beating an Eremite. Who the... Oh, Harry. No, not Harry. Not anymore. Harry? Damore? Tiffany asks, questioningly. Yeah, it's me. Surprised you recognised me under my new piercings. I've just got to stop meeting my Facebook friends like this. Hi, Tiffany. But if you're the pinhead now, what happened to Kirsty and Elliot Spencer? Great question. Like I said, good work on the Eremite. But what was your plan for getting back home? Ruby slippers? I've been to hell three times already. I never had trouble getting back before. Quite a risk you take. Were you expecting Kirsty to protect you this time? You keep calling that thing an Eremite. What's its deal? It's not like any Cenobite I've seen before. Cenobites are communal. Eremites are solitary. They serve Leviathan's will on Earth, solo. They're custodians of Hell's devices. They pass Le Martian's toys on to new owners and keep the puzzles safe from harm. What are you talking about? I've never seen these guys before and we smashed dozens of devices. That's because Spencer wanted the puzzles destroyed. So before he left his old post in Hell, he told the Eremites to stand down and let you have your fun. But Spencer's word is no longer gospel here. There's a new sheriff in town. And quite frankly, I could use some, well, deputies. Are you you asking me to become a Cenobite? No, of course not, nothing like that. I need help on Earth. I need someone with access to my files and my old contacts. I know I can trust you. And if I don't agree? What, I'm stuck here? No, of course not. Either way, I'm sending you back to Earth, just like I did last time you ended up here. So it seems Harry Damore has been a guardian angel for Tiffany in Kirsty's place. Oh, that that answers that. During Elliot Spencer's crazy power grab, Theo, Rajiv, and I ended up on the the wrong end of an airstrike. There was nowhere to go but but down. Did we lose them? Yeah. I don't think the damned really want to come in this maze. And who here thinks that's a good sign? We need to get... Home? A door opens up behind them. It was a portal out of hell, straight into Damore's office. I thought it was your doing. Kirsty. Sending you guys home was my first act as Hell's new Pope. I mean, I wasn't going to let you suffer, was I? Besides, I knew you'd keep fighting the good fight. That's why I got Norton to hook up with you too. My point is, I'm on your side. I always have been. I've always tried to help you and Kirsty, Theo, everybody. Now, I could really use some help in return. This puzzle, kind of a red phone, it summons me. It'll be hard to get messages to you, and I'll need you to check in often. I'll help you fight hell on Earth, if you help me fight for Earth in hell. So, what do you say? Go find yourself another Faust de Moor and deal with demons. But if I don't, how would I find you, curse thee? Damn you, de Moor. Damn you for giving in to hell. Tiffany is caught in a 
moral dilemma, curse thee, demore, hell or earth. Who's telling the truth? Who does she fight for? She holds out her hand. She takes the box from Demore. And damn me for giving in to you. <sighs> so that happened. Wish I knew if it was the right thing to do, if it was... Why do I feel like Eve with the apple? She holds the box in front of her. Oh, curse thee. Where are you? We flash to curse thee in bed. She wakes up, stretches, yawns, click. Who's there? Elliot. Who else would it be? Happy anniversary, sweetheart. I love you. We open with a familiar sight. We've been here before, we've seen this tent. I have heard your call. It has gained you entrance to this temple. Elliot Spencer, soldier of earth and hell. The true test begins now. What say you? We've seen this before. Elliot Spencer. Before some deity. Before consuming some grubs. Melting his flesh away. And becoming the god that nearly destroyed the earth. And, indeed, Leviathan. We see this play out again, and he utters those words. I want to see the world bleed. But we see the deity. It's not who it was before. It looks like Kirsty Cotton. Good. You had to become human to achieve something inhuman. Eat, soldier, and be free. Free from the shackles of your humanity. And his face begins to melt. Free to do what you were destined to do. The grubs and insects purged from his flesh as they melt and eat their way from his stomach. Leviathan stands there. Next. Savor the pain, Kirsty Cotton. It will be the last sensation you ever truly feel. Kirsty Cotton stands there. Lacerations on her flesh. Wait! Leviathan is marking her to be the high priestess of hell. There's... there's someone here! There is no one here, Kirsty. Just you, me, and Leviathan. Elliot Spencer is on his knees. Shut the fuck up, Spencer. Someone's here. Invisible. We've already seen this play out. It appears to be some form of limbo. Kirsty stands there, looking and watching. Oh. Ah, who are you, little ghost? You, you aren't supposed to be here. This isn't... Oh, this isn't how it happened. This isn't real. We've done this before. We... That was unwise. What's going on? Isn't it obvious? We're trapped in a mind prison. Haven't you learned yet that hell isn't all hooks and chains? Sometimes hell's most eloquent tortures require that the victim not realize he's in hell. This, this is torture, making us relive our memories. Mm, no, that doesn't make sense. This is definitely a mind prison. So why aren't we being tortured? What's going on? And then the milkman, Leviathan, stands before them both. Leviathan! Don't be stupid, girl. Why would the Lord of the Labyrinth manifest as a milkman? But if Leviathan's here, that means... Next. 
And we cut to the house. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. I love you. I love you too. Kirsty and Elliot kiss. We've seen this before. <sighs> Get off me! What the fuck is this? We were... We were in Leviathan's chamber and... And that ghost appeared and then Leviathan... Popped out of nowhere. The milkman, Leviathan, stands there once more. Next. And now, we cut to where this all began. Say it then. Speak your folly. You aim to be what exactly? Human. You understand the term. A return to the flesh, an attempt to earn the salvation of heaven. And should you falter, as I, as, as I... What is it, Bellows, speak? The salvation of heaven, you, Spencer. How was anyone dumb enough to believe you? Let alone Leviathan. What is this? What is this? Isn't it obvious? This. Next. Is. Next. All. Next. Leviathan's. Next. Illusion. Next. Leviathan is having his fun with Elliot and Kirsty. No! Kirsty, it's Frank. It's Uncle Frank, you remember? Only, you don't, do you, Kirsty? You don't really remember. You blame hell for your dear daddy's death, and for the death of your innocence, you blame me. Don't you see how unfair that is? I didn't kill Daddy. Uncle Frank killed him. I didn't take your innocence or show you the world's messy underpinnings. Uncle Frank did. In the soiling of Kirsty Cotton, me and mine are innocent. Elliot stands before Kirsty in the house where Frank and the Cenobites showed themselves to her. Innocent! You! The sheer gall of Elliot's statement hurts like a knife. Come on, Spencer! Let's end this! And Kirsty Cotton is the High Priestess once more. You're sure you want to fight me? Have you forgotten what happened to your lover when he tried that? The memory of... Elliot tearing Edgar in half snaps across Kirsty's mind. You fucking bastard, Spencer. How dare you call yourself innocent to me? She lunges forward, claws out. You've cost me everything I ever fucking loved. Oh yes, more recriminations, tedious cow. As he grabs her hand, chucks it on one side. How plain do you need me to make it for you? Even with all the power of hell at your disposal, your gifts are nothing compared to what my benefactor gave me. There's so much strength flowing through me now that I could kill you with my little finger. But, he says, as he sucker punches Kirsty to the gut, that would be undignified. And so what he does is he tears part of the banister and stabs it into Kirsty. So, we'll make do with the materials at hand. As Kirsty runs down the stairs, Oh, yes, run! That always works well. Shall I give you a head start? 
make your inevitable slaughter more sporting. As Kersey runs down the stairs, she bumps into the milkman once more. Oh, would you hurry up and reset everything? This is one scenario I'm not going to miss. And the milkman just coyly looks at her and fades out. Oh, she says, and the wood through her gut. Of course. Kirsty Cotton, come out, come out, wherever you... Jesus, Spencer. Ah? Would you stop listening to yourself talk long enough to actually think for a minute? Careful, little girl. Now, where'd you get to? Oh, sure. Go ahead and kill me. Just like Leviathan wants you to do. You think Leviathan dropped me into a simulacrum with his current high priestess? Just so I can kill her. Again, Cotton, you have delusions of persecution. Think about it, Spencer. Leviathan put us in here for a reason. He's not trying to torture us. You pointed that out. So why all the simulations? Why make us think we're in love? Or parent and child? Why make us relive our memories? Because he's a perverted god who likes to fuck with mortals. Leviathan wants something, and he needs us to give it to him. All those situations he put us in, all these lives he's had us leading, none of them got him what he wanted. That's why he kept resetting them. But I just saw him, and he didn't reset us. Whatever he wants, we're giving it to him right now. You saw him, did you? How convenient he didn't stick around and let me see him too. I'm nobody's fool, Cotton. Isn't it obvious? You're everybody's fool. Enlighten me. You said... You wanted to become human again, to seek salvation, but nobody's stupid enough to believe that. So why did Leviathan let you become mortal again? Because he wanted you to do exactly what you did. Run off to some other creature for power. Your benefactor, that thing that empowered you, did you ever ask yourself why it helped you? What it had to gain? You've probably done exactly what it wanted too. If fighting each other is truly what Leviathan wants, what would you have us do instead? I'm a Cenobite, and you're whatever kind of abomination you are now. We're each massively powerful, probably strong enough to break out of here if we actually work together. Hmm. We're giving him what he wants by fighting. Or by you hurting me, by my pain, my fear, or how much you're enjoying it. Well, he says, before he punches Kersey in the face, it is awfully fun. God, you're a dick, Spencer, fine. And Kirsty fades away as she says, come and get me. What? I can't fight you. Or I'll end up like Edgar. But I don't have to fight you if you can't find me. And I think I'm getting the hang of manipulating this dream world. You can't hide forever, little girl. Can't I? You're sure of that? If you want to get me, seems like your best bet is to get us back to the real world where I don't control the landscape. Fine. Have it your way, then. You've taken the fun out of it. Truce. Until we're out of this place. Anyway. He holds out his hand, and the apparition of Kirsty grabs it. And as they hold hands, the earth 
The world around them shatters. No! What? And they realize. We're still trapped, but... Damn you, Cotton. You had me fooled. Spencer, no. I really thought. And there, Leviathan says it once more. Next. Happy anniversary, Mrs. Spencer. And Harry Damore looks on at the simulation, their own personal hell unfolding. We're back in hell. We see Harry Damore, the army of the damned following him, as he sits atop his war horse. Ruling in hell is overrated. It's been a year since I stopped being Harry Damore. New York private investigator and part-time demon hunter and became Damore, current high priest of hell and in that time I've come to understand one thing why Elliot Spencer would risk life and soul to quit this job. If it's not the incessant liturgies I have no ear for it's the constant torture of damned souls I have no stomach for. Or it's directing the other Cenobites in their duties, including leading the new Crusader army in their drills. All in all, it's almost a relief when someone tries to assassinate me. Almost, anyway. And we see the assassin dagger out through a Cenobite skull. Another goes down. His name is Daru Marchetti, the cankerist, a theological assassin. I ran afoul of him years ago, killing a woman to get at her unborn child at Christmas while muttering about a surfeit of messiahs. Nice guy. Supposedly, he gets his orders from the Vatican. Or from hell. Or both. For a minute, I assume him coming after me narrows the options there. Until he blows my mind. There are many hells. Of all people, you should know that. We see a demon holding a man. I am you. We see Marchetti standing there with his talisman. Marchetti's got some kind of talisman that prevents the powers of hell from hurting him. Glad I didn't put all my eggs in that basket. Harry Damore, gun out, Marchetti down. In the fray, I lose track of the cankerous special Cenobite killing knife. As we see Marchetti hanging from hooks and chains, the knife, the dagger in the floor. Bet it'll show up sometime later between my ribs, Harry Damore says as we see a hand picking up the knife. Got his talisman though. That'll probably come in handy someday. We feed Marchetti into the Cenobite converter. No sense wasting a perfectly good soldier just because he's in someone else's army. But he's got one last surprise for me. You... Honestly think you're the one in control here, Damore. You're a puppet! Leviathan's pulling your strings. Think, Harry. Why would Leviathan choose you? It's a question that cuts me like a razor. Maybe it was supposed to. Why am I here? Why did Leviathan choose me when his last two high priests took each other down? An assassin sent to murder you, only to swell the ranks of Hell's new army, female says. My lieutenant is talking behind me, but I barely notice. Then she says something that cuts me too. What is this new army for? Why am I here? I've wondered that this last year, 
plenty of times. But my new duties were always there to distract me. Maybe they were supposed to. There are many hells. That's got a ring of truth to it. I fought plenty of demons that were far more Sunday school than Leviathan's worshippers. Things that smelled of shit and bad sushi. I always wondered why and where they came from. That part checks out. What about the rest of it? Why did Leviathan pick me? Am I being played? And what is this new Crusader army for? Crusaders imply a crusade, or am I reading too much into that? And then, my duties, they pull me away again. As I feel the tug of a device being solved, a gate between hell and earth tearing open. And I try, I try to ignore it. And then I see the gate's opener, Tiffany. Tiffany, assumed name, survivor of hell turned hell fighter, part of my old network. Though I never met her, and currently working out of my old office in New York, at her fingertips. All my files, all my paranormal contacts in the world of the living. I couldn't tell you when I came to the decision I did, but duties be damned. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. All of this. We see a demon holding a man once more and it speaks. I am you and you are love. Stupid flashbacks. I hate stares. I send Tiffany back to Earth with a box that summons me and instructions to look up all my files for hellish activity that isn't consistent with what we know of the Cenobites. She asks what happened to Kirsty Cotton, her surrogate mother, and my predecessor as Hell Priest, and I tell her, well, good question, isn't quite a lie. What happened to Kirsty is a good question. I know where Kirsty and Elliot Spencer her predecessor are, locked inside a memory sphere together. The question is, why? Did Kirsty fail in some way to be stripped of her role and trapped in fantasy? Or did Spencer need a jailer? Or is Kirsty punishment for Spencer? Or is there a bigger game afoot? Now that's a stupid question. With Leviathan, there always is a bigger game. And seeing Spencer and Kirsty brings up another question that's been bothering me. You, Crusader, tell me about your life as a human. I had no human life. I have always served Leviathan. High Priest, I must attend to my duties. That's not true. Leading the witness. Tell me of your life before... You were a Cenobite. I have always been a Cenobite. Please, priest, I must proceed to my new posting. Shut up and think about it. Marchetti, now turned Cenobite, looked shocked, strained. I... I... As the cankerist Cenobite starts the twitch, I begin to think. Maybe I should have tried a different guinea pig for this. One who didn't come here expressly to kill me. Crusader, continue to your posting. Female steps in. A word, my liege. I don't know my lieutenant's name either. In fact, all I know of her is that she helped me against hell before while I was still human and that she was in love with Elliot Spencer. Not a good sign. What you are doing was unwise. If you'd kept probing at Marchetti's memories, he would have remembered his human life and the mission that brought him here. How do you know? Because that was Kirsty Cotton's curse to me and the rest of my Cenobium. She reminded us of the human lives long drowned under our decades in hell. I, Spencer, never forgave her that trespass. 
And why did your synobium have their memories replaced when I was left intact? Intact, <laughs> PTSD, flashbacks and all. And Kirsty and her synobium, they all retained their human memories, right? Why? One answer to that seems staring you in the face, detective. Of course. Because Leviathan wanted things from me and Kirsty that we couldn't give if he stripped away our personalities. But what Leviathan wanted from me and my kind required violating our minds as well as our bodies. That's all very informative, provided I can trust my lieutenant, and I can't. She's been a servant of hell for decades, on top of being Spencer's woman in his Cenobite days. Interviewing witnesses isn't getting me anywhere. Time to try another tactic. Surveillance. Couldn't help but notice the cankerous Cenobite was trying to get somewhere. Did my lieutenant really want to keep me? from waking up the human inside him? Or did she want him to get where he was going? My lieutenant would squawk if she knew I was out in the pit without an honour guard. But the hoi polloi of Hell's Damned are good and cold right now, following their failed uprising. One runs in a damned soul, DEATH TO THE Cenobite OPPRESSORS! Almost there. DEATH TO HER! Barbed wire rips out, cuts his head off, he's dead. This was the cankerous destination. We see a castle. So what is it? And why don't I know about it? The castle is guarded. What is the meaning of this? This way is forbidden. The guard refuses entry. Even holding out his weapon. But I am your high priest. To you, it is forbidden most of all. You have been warned, turn back now or we will force you back. Get out of my way. So be it. He launches his weapon. But the talisman that Harry de Moore stole from Marchetti reacts. The force field launches up. Thank you, Marchetti. Very useful little talisman you brought me. And Harry de Moore walks in. And as he walks through the castle, he reaches an opening. Now what? Something catches his eye. He stops. Well. And we see what he was looking at. A five-headed abomination. A Cenobite beast like no other with blades for hands, axes, whips, chains, you name it. This is a true horror of hell. And Harry de Moore can only simply say, Well, oh, that's new. And he holds out the talisman as the Cenobite beast strikes and it pushes him back. He's down on the floor, the talisman knocked out of his hand, presumably. And the creature begins a stranglehold on Harry. But before it can lay its fatal blow, a dagger flies in. It's Marchetti's knife, but... Oh, my liege, move! That wound won't distract it for long. Well, shit. Marchetti's knife cut through regular Cenobites like butter. It was supposed to assassinate me, a high priest. And it seemed to just make this thing mad. The creature stands, roaring, ready to strike once more. The hooks and chains of the Cenobite Order reach out and attempt to subdue the monster. My lieutenant invokes her chains. It's not enough. By itself. Harry launches his barbed wire. But together, it proves. Still, not enough. Fuck. That's it. We gave our best shot. All we can do now is escape with our lives. As they run out the door. But they're blocked. Never mind. What now, my liege? Know any good prayers? Who would hear us? There's still one last shot. But it's a long shot. 
Do you remember what it was like when you were human? Harry Damore asks the Cenobite monster. Because you were once all of you were. It leans in. Trickery. Lies. It's not trickery. You were human once. You came here when you died. Or you died because you solved a puzzle. Hell turned you into this. But you weren't always like this. Remember. Remember it. Remember your parents. Remember your brothers and sisters. Remember your family. Think of the sun on your face. The taste of your favourite food. The way it felt to fuck someone. Come on. Who were you? The creature stands. Each head questioning. I... I was... Oh God. I forgot. And in that moment... The creature begins to consume itself. It rips itself apart. Its guts spilling out. Its blades hitting its limbs, hacking at its own flesh. It kills itself. It rips its middle head off. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Your quick thinking has cleared the way. Don't let the spectacle distract you from the real prize. As they walk up the stairs and open a door, a blue beam of light on their faces. And as they walk through, they see the labyrinth and a blue beam in the sky. You don't seem pleased, my liege. Pleased? Why? Of course I'm pleased. It's it's just... It's a lot to take in. I must consider this, all this further, in solitude. As Harry walks off, Harry steps atop his war horse. That was sloppy. I should have held myself together better. She saved me, but I still don't know where her allegiances lie. Add that to the list. The big pile of things I don't know or haven't bothered finding out. I've been so preoccupied with my new life this last year. I've, I've let so much slip past me. He gazes down at his Cenobite army such as Elliot Spencer's insurrection started with him tearing a hole between hell and earth. So the obvious question I should have asked is, what happened to the hole? And we see now what Female and Harry saw. The blue beam of light was a gateway, a portal to earth. It's clear now The new army. It's an invasion force. Hell is going to invade Earth. It's the final battle, the end of days. Hell's army comes to Earth. And I'm supposed to lead it. We open to a man, upside down, chained handcuffed. Chains tied to his feet. A cross around his neck. And standing before him with a blade is the vagrant, the lament configuration guardian in human form. He holds the blade up, cutting the man's throat. Blood pours out, down, onto a part of the floor. And we see what he was doing. He was summoning someone, something. Just as before when Frank pulled himself back from beyond, from the labyrinth. The vagrant, the homeless man, the lament configuration guardian, has summoned someone back from beyond. And as the skeletal form pulls itself from the pool of blood, the vagrant thrusts the lament configuration in his face and says, Solve it! Bloody hell! Get that fucking thing away from me! Terrified. He's seen this before. He knows what this is. The Lament Configuration Guardian holds up the blade. Threatens the man. Ah. Solve it now. Or I send you back to hell. He hands over the Lament Configuration. The box. The puzzle piece. And the man begins to solve it. A crack. In the wall appears, light beams through, as the gateway between dimensions has been summoned. And as the man looks at the light shining through from the labyrinth, 
a shadowy figure steps forth. You. Me. Good to finally meet you. It's Harry Damore, the new High Priest of Hell. Shame about the circumstances. Now, let's get you some skin. You're going to have to look presentable. I've got a job for you, Rajiv. It's Rajiv, or Jeeves, the man who worked with Tiffany. And we cut to Tiffany looking through binoculars. Stake out. This job blows. Shh! I mean, when the Pope of Hell gave us a job. I was kind of worried, but I wasn't worried about boredom. Shh! She means stop talking, Theo. The Church of Lost Salvation. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? But instead, shut up and look. And then they started their service. Good Christ fucking. And we saw why you sent us here. Describe them. How? Most of them didn't stay in one shape for more than a moment. I don't know what they were. Tiffany is retelling this story to Harry Damore. These demon-like beings pulling themselves out of the priests. But they weren't like any Cenobites I've ever seen. They weren't Cenobites. They weren't even from Leviathan's realm. You've got my files, my research. Why did you think all the reports of Hell's activity were inconsistent? Because there's more than one Hell? Or one Hell with a bunch of circles or whatever. Don't ask me for specifics. I'm a long way from Sunday school. More Hells, more demons. Oh, great. So what do you want us to do about them? Leave them alone? Is he fucking kidding? Damore said he'd get it taken care of. By who? We're supposed to be his agents on Earth, aren't we? I seem to recall you doing some bitching about that last night, Theo. Can a guy have mixed feelings about something, Norton? Didn't you ever feel ambivalent when you were still a government spook? You're overreacting. Remember, this is Harry we're talking about. His heart's in the right place. Look, Norton's hero worship aside, Harry Damore was a good dude. He helped me. Helped us all out a lot. And now he's Damore, the Pope of Hell. How do we know he's still the same guy? I don't like it either, Theo. Then what are we going to do? About the Church of Lost Salvation? There's nothing we can do. Until nightfall. And we cut to the church. Night. A congregation. Many have gathered. Our father. Who weren't in heaven. Now, solve it. Like he showed you. The vagrant is there with Rajiv. The lament configuration box in his hand. And he solves it. Unhallowed be thy name, as the sermon continues. Thy kingdom come, your will be. The candles go out, lights come down, chains and hooks. We're under assault in the name of the old one. And there, a dimensional gateway has opened, and the Cenobites step forward. We see female and new Cenobite soldiers. Oh, yes. Invoke your false idols. How else will you learn? They're armed. They're ready to strike. That nothing can save you now. We see them come down with a cleaver. One gets cut in half. As Tiffany and her harrowers, the new harrowers, are underneath the church leading their own assault. The demons are getting obliterated left, right, and center, whereas one jumps down, biting a Cenobite soldier. And there, underneath the church, they have created their seal. But the Cenobites know this. What? 
They recognize it. They feel it. One of the demons launches an assault on a Cenobite. The female knows. Ah, inviability has been stripped away. But who here would draw the glyph of the salutant? A demon is ripping out the guts of a Cenobite. As the harrowers run in, female looks on. You! Have you any conception of what you have done? Tiffany, Theo, and Norton, shocked, scared, they've realised. Uh, not as such? Do we help the, uh, monstrous ones? The enemy of my enemy? Uh, those look like friendlies to you. As female lashes out at one of the demons. Tiffany, what's the plan? Figure it out later. Kill them all, now! She raises her gun and starts unloading on the demons. The Cenobites are going down, one after the other. But the Guardian of the Lament Configuration begins to walk through the door, Rajiv behind him, and he changes, he alters, he rips his flesh off in an almighty roar. He becomes the serpent, the bony beast of hell, and he unleashes on the demons, ripping them in two. Oh Jesus, we are so fucked. Theo says, but he doesn't realise someone's running behind him with a sword. The man inches away, ready to strike. <laughs> Theo turns. What was the noise? Jeeves! Holy shit, man! You got your guts pulled out. How could you possibly be... Oh, shit. Theo realises what's gone on. How his friend is now here. Rajiv's hand is in the man's skull. Please. Please. Just kill me. Fuck. You're a... They brought you back. You... They brought you back as, as one of the zombie vampire guys. What the hell is going on? You've gotten yourself in the crossfire of a turf war between Leviathan servants and... And... Demons? From a different hell? We know, but who invited the Cenobites? Jeeves holds up the box. I did. Hey! As he gets snatched off of him. If you're, if you're gonna suck somebody's life out, Dracula, I've got him! Do it to help your friends! Theo points to the Norton, surrounded. Jeeves steps in, hands in the back of their skulls. He saves Norton. Rajiv! Thank you. That's all right. The man with the box escapes, running down the stairs. But he's playing with the box, trying to open it. Come on, come on! Back in the church, Tiffany swinging her axe. Norton, Theo and Rajiv are doing their best against the servants of this hell circle. The man outside with the box. God damn it! How hard is it to close this cursed thing? He's not trying to open it, he's trying to close it, trying to get rid of the Cenobites. Female is there. A demon launches itself at her. Daggers up. One looks strangely familiar. Is it the one that she took from Marchetti? She launches it at the demon's skull. It's down. Now, with all but one dispatched. Norton. Female. Theo. Tiffany. And Rajiv. Surround the last demon standing. It begins to contort, its flesh shrinking, its bones snapping. It bundles itself away into a ball as it slips into its own dimension, its own hell. What just happened? Knowing the battle was lost, it returned to the hell that spawned it. What? Without a box? Never heard of a demon doing that. The servants of the other hells do not possess the same gifts as we who serve Leviathan, or the same frailties. Some can travel to the living world on their own power, and travel back as well. The man outside has solved the puzzle box. Female knows this. As she slips away, she reaches out for the dagger of Marchetti. Wait! As she goes. Where'd she go? One of the cultists got the puzzle from me. He must have closed the gate. Rajiv, 
How are you alive? Damore. Damore brought me back. He gave me a puzzle to solve at specific times and places. To give the Cenobites access to Earth. Jesus, that's fucked. That's it. He's gone too far. Tiffany reaches out, grabs the dagger. It's time we take care of Demore, she says, as she holds the dagger of Marchetti. We see the lament configuration. A puzzle box. It's opening. The beams of light are cast on a set of hands. It's on the floor. A crack in the wall appears. The all too familiar bell tolls, signalling the gateway between dimensions. However, nothing walks out of the gateway. But something, it seems, walks in. We see one of the passageways of the labyrinth, winding down into the hellish dimension. And out of the tunnels, female Cenobite appears with her Cenobite guard. The box. You opened it. We. She sees who has entered hell. You! The Cenobite guard hold up their swords. They lunge forward. And there, we see who exactly it was that entered the Hell Gate. Come now, sister. When you attacked our mass, did you not expect reprisal? It's one of the demons. The one that took the box from Rajiv. A demon from another Hell. And he has brought with him reinforcements. They lunge for one another. The demons holding their claws. The Cenobites wielding their swords. But something's not right here. The Cenobite sword comes down. But it bounces off the demon. The demon lunges forward. Bites the Cenobite. Hacks at him, in fact. And there, on another demon, we see... What is that? Is that the seal of the Salutant? The mark that makes Cenobites lose their invulnerability. And the mark that Tiffany laid under the church. A demon hacks at the Cenobite soldier's face. The seal of the Salutant high in the sky as the demon falls to the floor. And the two other demons, encased in... Bubbles, is this what the female Cenobite has done? She races off, she runs off, in fact. Brothers, hold them off! Get after her, she is not to get away! And as female runs down the corridors of the labyrinth, the winding pathways, her hooks and chains are summoned to block the pathway for the demons. She escaped? You idiot! She'll bring reinforcements. <laughs> Not that it matters. And now we're out of hell. We're with Tiffany and Norma Payne. I don't like this, Tiff. What's not to like, Norma? This is Harry we're talking about. I've known the man for years. He's never exactly been a saint. But he's got a decent heart. A good man in hell is still a good man. It's Harry. Or it isn't. We need to find out. Before more people die. Huh. <laughs> Here's the title and author of the book with the binding circle instructions. The ghost who told me about it also says it's unreliable. So watch yourself, girl. We're just going to ask Demore some questions. And what happens if you don't like the answers he gives? Or am I not going to like your answer? It would seem that Tiffany is building or concocting some form of plan to maybe enter Hell or summon Harry. Either way, she intends to perform a hellish inquisition on the new Pope of Hell. 
And there, performing a sermon, is Harry de Moor himself, the High Priest. Sin and damnation, hell fire and brimstone and, yeah, you know, you get the idea, I'm well, well look, I, I've never been good at public speaking. My liege, we are under assault, the female Cenobite has ran in. Demons from another hell have defiled our lord's halls. An interruption, thank God. All right, you heard her, brothers, to arms. And with that, the Cenobites file out and take arms against their demon counterparts. And as they make their way to the demons to wage a war in hell, we hear some familiarity from Harry. Butterfield? How's that left arm treating you? My liege, you have met this stain? Uh, we go back. Been a while, though. I haven't forgotten you, Damore. Some day you will get what's coming to you. Then you aren't here for me, Harry simply replies. And with that, Harry raises his hand, summoning the barbed wire, the chains of the Cenobites. But it simply bounces off the demons. Ah, I get it. You've got talismans to protect you from Hell's attacks, as Harry pulls out a cross. I've got one of those too. Oh, Harry, you're holding it wrong. And we see in Butterfield's hands, the cross, upside down. What now, Harry? We can't hurt you, and you can't hurt us. We seem to be at an impasse. Eh, wouldn't go that far, Harry says as he reaches behind his back. And he pulls out his gun, the same weapon he used to kill Marchetti. Bullets ricochet through the demons. And as this is going on, we cut to Harry's old office, Tiffany, Rajiv, Theo and Norton. Rajiv, you're sure you want to join us for this? After all you've been through recently, we'd, we'd understand. Tiffany, after what Demore's put me through, I have to do this. Okay then, let's do this, Tiffany says as she holds out the puzzle box and begins solving it. In hell, the bullets have sort of done something. Butterfield simply retorts, Bullets! You should know better, Demore. Most of us can't be killed by bullets. Not even silver ones. Eh, can't blame me for trying, he says as he holds up his gun once more. As he now disappears. Whoa! What the? And he reappears in his old office. Fuck. Oh. Hello, everyone. I, I hope this is just ugh, an intervention, Harry says as he puts up his hands. Everyone with a gun aimed squarely at him. What have you done with the Pontifex? Oh, they don't know what happened either. There's something else going on, Butterfield says as he realises no one quite knows where Harry has disappeared off to. Demore needs finding and killing. Dispatch the rappery. Sir, is it wise to send away our most fearsome weapon? I don't think you understand. The only real threat to us here is Demore. And there we see running behind Butterfield and his demons a monster, the rappery. Harry doesn't quite know what's going on. What exactly is this about? You've been pulling a lot of bullshit, Demur, and keeping us in the dark about why. And now, we're going to need some answers. Harry holds up his hands and says, Look, sorry, I can't talk now. If you'll excuse me, I'm needed. And something stops him, pulls him back. A puff of red smoke. The hell? Oh, a summoning circle. 
you realise these things are for full-blooded demons, right? Not human converts like Cenobites. This binding field is going to snap if I sneeze on it. Better keep your allergies in check then, Norton says. And Tiffany pipes up. We need to talk, Damore. Your timing is awful. Realising his Cenobite brothers and sisters are facing demons in hell. And we see the carnage, the demons laying waste to the Cenobites. Fall back! Yes, run. Show us what Leviathan soldiers are truly made of. Female runs off, retreating with what Cenobite guard she has left. Not far now, Butterfield says as he looks up at the diamond demon in the sky. The objective is in sight. I'm not fucking around. Would you let me out of this stupid circle? Not until you tell us why you had Rajiv open a hell portal at the Church of the Lost Salvation. What? It isn't obvious. I had to. To bring in Cenobites. They're called the demons there. Why? Because Leviathan wanted you to. Oh, for fuck. Oh, because I wanted to. I didn't know there were other hells until I took this job. In light of everything, using the Cenobites to fight the other hells. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. What about Rajiv? I don't have time for this. Are any of you listening to me? I need to go. Until we're satisfied with what you've got to say for yourself, you are going nowhere, Demore. Tiffany's gun is pointed at Harry's face. Fine. And Harry pulls his own gun from behind his back. You're forcing my hand. You, you can't be serious, Rajiv says, as Harry makes it clear he is, and he unloads on the new harrowers. Tell police with a gun, that's ridiculous, Harry. Everybody gives me shit about this gun. You have no idea how often it's coming in handy. Now... Let's do something about this shoddy binding circle. Tiffany unloads a few rounds. Shit! Don't let him get free! And Harry forces his hand through the shield. Jeeves! Um, what are you... Oh, sod it. And Rajiv stands up, a bullet through his skull. Harry! Take a look at me. Take a good long look. At what you've turned me into. You can't kill me with bullets now, Harry. And to fix this hole in my face, I'm going to have to find some poor sod and suck their life out. You made me a monster. Well, what the hell else was I supposed to do, Rajiv? You died and you went to hell. So, rather than leave you to be tortured for all eternity, I brought you back. The only way I could. I know it's not much of a life, but would you really prefer the alternative? I have to eat people to survive. And plenty of people deserve to be eaten. But look, if you don't like this, you can always go back to hell. Everyone raises their gun quickly at Harry. Don't try it, Damore. Look, that, whoa, whoa. That wasn't a threat, Jesus. But they're interrupted. The same familiar crack begins to appear. The gateway between dimensions. Uh, what the... What's going on? Hmm. The portal to hell. You opened it halfway to summon me? And now something is on the other end. It's opening it the rest of the way. So shit. And as Harry sees what is forcing its way through the gateway, you need to let me out right now, or we're all dead. Harry Damore stares at the demon from another hell. We're fucked. What, what the hell is that? Tiffany says. It's a rappery. They're basically walking demon tanks. Let me out of this binding circle. Harry Damore pushes against the circle. 
Theo in his stupidity responds, No! You still have to answer for what you've done, Harry. Harry Damore running out of time. The, then break the glyph so I'm invulnerable again before this thing... Oh, kills me as the demon tank lunges forward. But simply bounces off him. Oh, I forgot I had this. Harry Damore holds the talisman from Marchetti. But realising that he's the only one invulnerable here, shouts to Theo, No! Let's see what colour you bleed, Theo says as he jumps in with his blade. Gotcha! The blade goes in, blood pours out. Harry can only look on, it's too late. The demon tank sideswipes Theo away. Norton raises his gun. Fuck! I'll... You might hit him! Tiffany stops Norton. The tank looms over Theo, raising its claw. Theo, here! Harry throws the talisman over. Just in time, the blade comes down. And the force field lurches up, preventing harm. But the tank realises. It turns. And an ever-sinking feeling hits Harry de Moore. Oh. Shit. The claw comes down. Wraps itself around Harry de Moore's torso. The Hell Priest, the High Priest, the Pope of Hell. And as he stands on the seal, his invulnerability gone. The claws wrap around his torso, blood pouring out. Oh, God. Damn it, the binding circle, it's... It's got both of us. Somebody help me, please! Yeah, I'll, I'll... I'll let you out, Theo says as he runs in. No! The binding circle's got it trapped, if you please. Just get rid of the glyph of the salutant so I don't have to worry about this thing killing me. We see a hand, Norton's hand. He picks up a gallon tank of petrol and lights a match. And the demon from another hell, the tank... The rappery goes up in flames. How are you, Theo? Rajiv says. I, it, it almost got me. Fuck. What the fuck am I doing here, Jeeves? I'm, I'm just a purse snatcher, a pickpocket. What the fuck am I doing fighting demons? That demon's just one of many assaulting the labyrinth right now. And the Cenobites can't hurt them. They're all protected by talismans like that. So if I'm going to stop the demons from carrying out whatever their mission is, I need you guys to help. Harry calls on the new harrowers. Uh, you want us to help? You're insane. Or oh, hi. Not gonna happen, Harry. But Tiffany stands up. We'll do it. Uh, we will? Yes. Under one condition. Fall back! The female Cenobite shouts, Again, we retreat, while the heretics still defile our domain. A Cenobite soldier stands his ground. We can do nothing else while they are protected from us, so we retreat, and hope our Pontifex can bring a solution from wherever he is now. Hmm, our Pontifex is hardly worthy of the name. You've attended his sermons. Bite your tongue, lest someone bites it for you. The demons from another hell, they realise the Cenobites are merely running. Again, they'll attack us only to run away. How many times are they going to test our protection? More, I hope. It saves us the trouble of going to them. What are they doing, sister? They're moving the corpses of our dead. Why? Why? What care they for our dead? In time that may be made clear. No. No, it can't be. The female says as she realises what it is they're doing. They're forming a pattern, and the pattern itself forms the glyph of the salutant. Why? Why? She says. And as we pan out, we see high above the bastard diamond demon in hell, Leviathan. A 
and below it, the glyph of the salutant. Cenobites get their power from Leviathan. We're literally clad in his flesh. That's where you get your leather. Disgusting. We're vulnerable to the glyph, because Leviathan's vulnerable to it. A glyph that big. They've got to be here to assassinate Leviathan. We need to act fast before they finish the glyph. They're, they're going to assassinate the Lord of Hell. And we're going to stop them. I still hate this, Theo says. Is everybody ready? This is going to be tough. Tiffany, with respect, going in guns blazing is poor tactics. Especially since bullets won't kill the one with all the eyes or the flying demon. So what do you suggest, Norton? Between the protection talismans, the demon-killing knife and the Cenobite army, we've got some great resources here. How about we use them? And as we see the demons carrying the soldiers of hell to form the glyph of the salutant, Norton walks in with his gun out, walks up, squarely between one demon, <laughs> shoots him in the face. Butterfield stands there. Are you supposed to be Demore's cavalry? As demons lurch forward, they bounce off him. They realize that he has the talisman. And as they're on the floor, the Cenobites summon the chains, hooks, and barbed wire. And they start picking them off one by one. Guts of the demons spill out. Norton chucks the talisman towards Tiffany as she walks in with the blade, hacks the demon with the eyes in half <sighs> as it falls on the floor. Tiffany chucks the talisman over to Theo as Butterfield runs in straight around his throat. It falls out of his hands. Oof! Ahem. We hear a sound. Everyone turns round. It's Butterfield with Theo. We're finished here. Escort me back to our portal if you must. But if you humans try to hurt me, this one dies. A blade is wandering to Theo's face. You motherfucker. You wound me, Tiffany. I'm not the one. Who's got your surrogate mother locked inside a mind prison with Elliot Spencer? She turns instantly to Harry. Demore, is that true? We, we cannot do this right now. It's true. Demore's been lying to you. Butterfield is playing a mind game. But whilst he's doing this, Theo takes his chance, pulls the talisman from his pocket. What? You little motherfucker! But just like before, as the blade comes down, the shield goes up, and it bounces him away. Demore! And Harry sends his barbed wire out on it, around Butterfield. Ah! He's trapped. The barbed wire does its thing. It rips off his other arm. His only arm left. <sighs> well, what are you waiting for? Demore, kill me. You're longing to. I can feel it. He's there on his knees, his arm on the floor, blood pouring from the wound. I'd love to. After the torture, lots of torture. Tiffany, Rajiv, Norton and Theo head back to the portal, back to Harry's old office. Well, that was... Honestly, I don't know what the fuck that was, Theo says. Good thinking, Tiffany. Only agreeing to help if we got to keep these talismans. That's going to make fighting hell that much easier. So, let's not make a habit of defending hell instead, okay? I wish we knew if we'd even done the right thing. Maybe, maybe we should have helped the other hell, Jeeves says. Believe me, that's not a rabbit hole you want to go down. Picking sides between state actors is hard enough without them being states of being. How many regimes have you toppled, Norton? Theo, 
I always have trouble telling when you're serious. We see Tiffany, looming, lingering in hell. She has the puzzle box. And as the harrowers make their way through the gate, Theo turns. What about you, Tiffany? You've been even quieter than usual. And they realise that she's closing the gate, the portal to hell. Tiffany! Tiffany! What the fuck are you doing? Ah! Grab my hand! Jesus! Theo! Theo! Look out! As Norton and Jeeves pull him back from the gate and it closes. And they're left there. In the office. Get off me! What the fuck, Theo? That was stupid. Were you trying to get your arm amputated? I was trying to save Tiffany, you dicks. Save? Tiffany? What? Tiffany looked like she wanted to be saved to you while she stood there closing the portal with us on the other side? The fuck are you talking about? Why would she intentionally strand herself in hell without us? What? Isn't it obvious? We see Tiffany walking down the labyrinth. Curse thee. I'm going to get you out of here. And she carries the blade. Come, gentlemen. Is this the worst you're capable of? We see Butterfield, armless now, chained up, blood pouring out. Two Cenobites staring at him. We ask again, lawyer. Why did Abaddon send your terrorist cell to assassinate our Lord Leviathan? Additionally, what do you have to smile about? Ah, uh, I know something you don't. That is obvious. If you didn't have knowledge we must prize from you, none of us would have to be here. No. You misunderstand. As Tiffany slowly creeps up behind the Cenobites with the demon dagger from Marchetti, stabs one in the throat as the other calls forth the chains. But it's too late, she has the talisman and the hooks and chains bounce off as she slices at the gut of the Cenobite, the entrails pouring out. I'd give you a round of applause, but I'd be overreaching myself. Hello, Tiffany. I wasn't expecting a visit. What can I do for you? Kirsty, you said Demore's got her locked up here somewhere. Where is she? Don't be stupid. I'm not going to tell you where she is. I'm going to show you where she is. Now you're being stupid. I'm not letting you go free. Of course you are. You need something from me. Information. And I need something from you. Freedom. I use the metaphor about scratching each other's backs, but that would be in bad taste. Tiffany raises the dagger up to his chin. What if I torture it out of you? <laughs> Butterfield just bursts into hysterics. What's funny? And she pulls the dagger closer. You little mouse. You want to torture me for information. The line starts behind the professionals. If you want to save your adopted mother from hell, helping me is your only shot. Now what do you say? Do we have a deal? We cut now to Harry Damore speaking to his Cenobites. Well, damn, that was fast. Any idea how Butterfield got out? Picked the locks with his tongue? We believe the abomination had help, my liege. Well, yeah. Question is who? More invading demons or a Judas in our midst? Neither. Tiffany has been sighted at large in the labyrinth. Then that means she's going to fuck things up for everyone. If we don't stop her in time. As Harry, female and the other Cenobites run out. 
And there in the labyrinth, we see Tiffany and the Cenobite soldiers marching. Where now? Through there. We're just about. But it's too late, he can't finish his sentence. The Cenobite soldiers have seen them. Ah! But Tiffany, with her life and Kirsty's depending on it, wields the dagger with merciless intent. Tiffany! She turns, not realising what's made the noise. It's Butterfield. He's mutated, changed, altered, transformed. Could I get some help with these two? What the fuck? I needed a new body for this fight. The old one had seen better days. Anyway, now, if you please. The cross of a caterpillar centipede mutation demon monster drops the Cenobites. Finish the job so we can move on. And as they continue down through the labyrinth, we see the blood pouring out of the Cenobite guard. Thank you. And now, as they enter the chamber, this is your stop. But on guard, Tiffany, if you're fucking with me, I swear to God, I'm not lying. Scout's honor. You were never a Boy Scout. Well, Hitler Youth, that counts, yes? Kirsty isn't here, Butterfield. Of course she is. You just have to know. And he points. Where to look? Tiffany walks over, picks up the orb. Eat, soldier, and be free. Free from the shackles of your humanity. Free to do what you are destined to. We've seen this play out many times. Pinhead approaching the deity, eating the grubs, and transforming. But something's different. He sees Tiffany. Wait. There's someone here. Tiffany stands there as an apparition. Cursey. Happy. Tiffany. Pinhead. Angry. Tiffany. And there we see Tiffany holding the orb and Butterfield. Tiffany. Can you hear me? No. As he walks away and she begins to disappear. Well, you wanted to find Kirsty. Should be more careful what you wish for. As I said, my lord, there's nothing out of order here. Harry and the Cenobite guard are in the orb chamber. Damn it. Where are we? Tiffany finishes the sentence. A mind prison. It's another of Leviathan's tortures. As Kirsty and Tiffany run away from Pinhead, Elliot Spencer. No! Where are we now? What's this desert? One of Spencer's memories. He met a servant of some other hell. That's where he got his new powers from. The powers he used for his coup d'etat in India. So Spencer's new powers are from another hell? Yes! Come on! We've got to run! He's too strong to fight! But Tiffany is armed. She has the talisman. And she has the dagger. And she swipes it across Elliot Spencer. But nothing happens. Ah, uh, what was that supposed to be? It's a demon-killing knife. It's always worked before. Oh, Tiffany. Poor, naive, stupid Tiffany. That's not a knife. It's just your imagination. He holds up the knife. And he slices her throat with it. Tiffany! Kirsty shouts. Tiffany's down on the floor, blood splurting out. Finally, I never thought you'd shut up. I'm going to fucking kill you. Kirsty runs in, grabbing Elliot Spencer. Oh, yes. Well, you're welcome to try, little. But something actually hurts him now. Ouch! You bitch. No more cat and mouse for you, little girl. Only death. He has his hands around Kersey's throat. <coughs> Just <coughs> fucking do it, <coughs> you asshole. And then 
Suddenly, they begin to appear in the orb chamber. Tiffany, your throat isn't cut anymore, you're okay. Elliot Spencer's there, Kirsty, the former high priest of hell. It, it was all in our heads, wasn't it? And they embrace. I spent all that time trying to break out. But I guess all I needed to do was give up. We did it, Tiffany. Yeah. You've sure done it this time. Don't go anywhere, Spencer. Harry Damore walks in with his guard. Harry? You're the new Pontifex? What the fuck, Damore? You knew Kirsty was here all year? And, and, and you made me think you had no idea where she was? Yeah. You know why I lied to you? Because I knew you'd just try to rescue her. Of course I would. Why would you try to stop me? Because of what might happen if you succeeded. Kirsty realises what might happen. What the, the fuck are you? Whoa, the ground shakes. Fuck. The orb chamber starts to fall apart. Jesus. A hole breaks through. Hell starts to shatter. <coughs> what is this? It stinks. Like shit. And weak old sushi. Elliot Spencer falls to the ground. <sighs> his guts, his insides. Spencer, it's it's starting. What is this? What's what's up his sleeve this time? I don't think it's that, Kirsty. As Elliot Spencer lies on the floor, green pus pooling out of him, and an arm, an insect arm. And I'd like to remind everyone, Harry says, I did tell you so. As Pinhead stands up. Spencer? Not quite. Not anymore. A transformed demon. Empowered. Emboldened. From another hell. We open with Spencer. Change deformed. Monstrous. Oh yes. This will do nicely. He's walking with Butterfield. Abaddon's troops are to your liking, Legate Spencer. Just Legate, please, Butterfield. It's time to put the past behind us. A clean slate, my lord. As you say, I spent far too long servile to Leviathan, the lord of desire. What a Poultry sin. I'll be much more at home here in the hell of fury. And then from behind him, someone speaks. This will never be your home, priest. Abaddon leads a legate who will lead us in battle, not in prayer. I've led men in battle in the Great War. A demon approaches. <laughs> Beg pardon. Did I make a joke? The Great War. We fought in the Great War. Against our fellow angels for our freedom and dignity. You're an ape who fought against other apes. Is your problem with me that I was Leviathan's clergy? Or that I was a human. My problem with you, primate, is that you're still breathing. Spencer's teeth are bared. The new legate of Abaddon's army, of the Hell of Fury, is most displeased. Are you challenging me, soldier? Are you too busy praying and scratching yourself to fight, monkey? Butterfield, does our Lord Abaddon have a protocol for challenges that I should be aware of? Yes. Don't get killed. And with that, the demon swipes at Spencer. But he dodges and lunges forward. An epic battle ensues. 
insectoid tentacles and tendrils lash out. Spencer dodging and weaving. He gets hit. He goes down. Spencer, unaccustomed to his new body. The demon gets the better of him. Before he knows it, he's on the floor. Well, that was pathetic, monkey. The demon looms over Spencer. But he merely smiles. We see a coy look in his eye. The demon's claw comes down, but Spencer's too quick. He rolls out the way, jumps, and he's there, behind the demon in the air, ready to strike. And in an instant, he decapitates the beast. We are all creatures of fury here. But will you be a servant of your fury? Or will you make your fury serve you? We realize who he's speaking to. The demon horde he is now in possession of. The choice is yours. As he stomps in the face of the demon that tried to best him. But something interrupts him. Sermonizing monkey. He grits his teeth. Anger. Fury. Swells up in the former hell priest. He hunches over. His bones shaking. His new exoskeleton crunching. Turns to the demon horde. Trying to figure out who now tests his patience. And Butterfield from above taunts him. Ah oh, ha yes, Legged Spencer. A clean slate indeed. Spencer gave himself to Leviathan, did his bidding. Tried to turn and twist the tide of Hell's army against them. Turned on the Lord of the Labyrinth, the Lord of Desire. But it would seem the Lord of Fury. Abaddon has his ways as well. And now we cut to two men, the lament configuration, in the middle of a table. So, it's the real deal. The real deal? Not quite. As I said before, it's a fully functional replica, built using Le Martian's original notes. But it works? It does. Guaranteed. You've tested it. If, if I had tested it, I wouldn't be here speaking with you. It's just, you're asking a lot of money for it. Let me ask you this, my friend. How much is eternal damnation worth to you? And we see who's looking across the table from him. My name is Edgar Boyle. And I have no interest in eternal damnation. I just want to find her. Kirsty Cotton. The love of my life. Everyone says they'd follow their soulmate to hell and back. But I actually did. To hell at least. I never had the opportunity to follow her back. We see Kirsty Cotton. The high priestess of hell. And Edgar in his demonic Cenobite form. Edgar, don't go. He was torn in half by Pinhead. I see you again, my love. Isn't it obvious? Nothing can keep us apart. Those words, the last words I spoke to her, they followed me into the black void of oblivion, echoing off the walls of darkness for what felt like an eternity. Nothing can keep us apart. Nothing can keep us apart. Nothing can keep us apart. And then suddenly, I was rebirthed from the void. Curse thee! He stands there in a pool of his blood. I rooted through the city's refuse to clothe and feed myself, all the while gathering information I had to get back to Kirsty, back to hell. As far as I know, there's only one way to do that without actually earning your ticket there. I hit the streets hard. I asked every doper, dealer and degenerate where I could find the box. If they ask me what box, I'd break one of their fingers and ask again. If that didn't jog their memory, I'd break their face. Brutish as my tactics were, 
They yielded fast results. I finally got a name. William Romano, dealer of black market reproductions. So now here I am, about to purchase a puzzle box without a penny to my name. What's the verdict, my friend? Do we have a deal? Edgar reaches inside his jacket pocket. All right. It's a deal. And pulls out a knife, jams it straight down into William's hand. Ah! Blood pours out and Edgar reaches for the box. Hard part's already over. With any luck, I'll be in hell within the hour, back with Kirsty where I belong. But William's smart. He reaches under the desk, clicks a switch. The door slams down and he pulls a gun out. Did you really think you could just walk out of here, you stupid prick? Nobody steals from me. He has the gun squarely on Edgar. Edgar runs in with an attempt to topple the table. But William's quick, he shoots and he misses. Edgar flips the table now. But of course, William is still stuck to it, his hand. The dagger through. I'm leaving, Romano. How do I open the door? Fuck you. Have it your way. I'll just open it here. As Edgar begins to play with the puzzle box. No, 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 no. Are you insane? You'll drag us both to hell. That's the idea. No, no. The light erupts from the lament configuration as William tries to rip his hand free from the table. The light continues to pour as Edgar's hands and fingers move across the intricate patterns. And William, sensing the danger, just rips his hand free. Ah! Runs in and attempt to punch Edgar. But Edgar, pure focus on finding his love, Kirsty, solves the lament configuration and in one instant smacks William across the face. And that's it. They're transported somewhere. You son of a bitch, I'll kill you and I'll fucking... Oh. Oh, Jesus, fuck. This isn't right. Of course this isn't right, you fucking maniac. We're in hell. Oh, God, I'm in hell. No. I've been to hell. And we look out. Edgar stares at a wasteland. This, this is somewhere different. Either Leviathan decided to remodel or I'm in the wrong place. I'm, I'm not going to find you here, Kirsty. I don't get it. I solved the box. I opened the gateway. This doesn't make any sense, unless... An epiphany strikes Edgar. Where did you get that box? What fucking difference does it make? Edgar runs in, grabs William's hand, and begins to rip it apart. Don't, don't! Tell me where you got that box! Rips it again. Tell me! I, I already told you I made it. Oh, I bought copies of a Martian's original notes and I built the fucking thing. Le Martian's notes. You followed them precisely. You built it exactly as he designed. How could it be exact? Do you know how fucking old those notes are? Some of the materials, they're impossible to find. I had to make a few substitutions. What substitutions? Different pieces in each one I built. Each one? Edgar realises. How many did you? As something snaps them out from their conversation. A noise. A demon. A dragon sweeps in and grabs them. Fucking Christ, this thing's going to eat us. If this thing was hungry, we'd be dead already. There's either a nest of hungry baby dragons eagerly awaiting our arrival, or it was sent to find us as the dragon takes them to a crater and drops them in. Demons pick them up. More sinners for the pyre. Well done, my pet. These men shall be judged. A demon lord sits on a throne, stroking the dragon. Bring forth the first sinner. Clearly the demon is the lord of this hell. Oh god, oh god. I am your god now, sinner. And your god demands judgment. He leans in and sniffs. I smell avarice. This man is guilty of avarice. He is a greedy, plagiarizing soul who has gladly profited from the blood, sweat and tears of others. His sentence, 
just as he bastardized the work of others for his own personal gain, his body and soul shall be plagiarized for the entertainment of my loyal audience. The demons around him sweep their hands up with joy. As you wish. A demon grabs both of William's shoulders. No, wait! Rips him apart in two. Pulls out his spine and rips his skull out. Then the demon, combining his skull and William's hair, makes a doll and throws it to the audience of demon spectators. Bring forth the next sinner. He too must be judged. You heard the judge, sinner. He pushes Edgar forward. He leans in, sniffs him. <laughs> he sent you. What? <laughs> he gets choked. You dare feign ignorance with me. You reek of him. Leviathan's underlings are not worthy even of damnation in my realm. Your kind, be they sovereign or sinner, are not welcome here. Leave this place. The demon judge holds Edgar up and his eyes begin to glow. That same dimensional portal electricity. And he's transported back to Earth. Well now, of all the strangeness I've encountered, that may have been the strangest yet. None of this makes any sense. A plagiarized puzzle box sends me to hell, but it's the wrong hell? How is that even possible? And why did that thing think Leviathan sent me? So many questions, but none of them do me any good. I'm still here, on Earth, when I'm supposed to be with her. Back to the drawing board. I'll find another box, a real one and get back to her that way. I don't care how long it takes, I'll tear the world apart to find it. And Edgar turns. Or maybe I won't have to. When he was thrown back into the earth dimension, he knocked a box over and inside a stack of puzzle boxes fall out. Son of a bitch. He was mass producing them. He said he'd use substitutions in each box he built with this many he... He must have used the right combination at some point. One of them has to open the gateway to the right hell. Kirsty's hell. Edgar picks up a box. Of course, if there are two hells, there could be three. If there are three, there could be four or twenty or a thousand. Which means I'd better get started. I'll fight my way through a thousand hells if I have to, just to hold her in my arms again. Nothing can keep us apart. Nothing can keep us apart. That mantra rings through his ears. Nothing can keep us apart. I love you, Kirsty. And he's transported once more. He's surrounded by demons. My, my, my. So full of passion. Sorry to report that it will be quite some time until you are reunited with your precious Kirsty. We know this voice. It's Leviathan. You're an excellent scout, Edgar, whether you know it or not. I have much use for you yet. He's looking on as the demons grab Edgar in another hell. can't believe it. Helping the Cenobites doesn't sit well with us either, Theo. Not that, Jeeves. Tiffany. She, she fucking ditched us, closed the portal to hell behind us, and we, we, we just weren't expecting it. Why? So she could go on a suicide mission? A suicide mission to rescue her mother figure, or her sister figure, or whatever it is. Kirsty Cotton is to her. That's really so hard for you to believe, Theo? It seems the new harrowers are debating the events that transpired. Tiffany closing the door to hell so she could try to get Kirsty back. She should have asked us to help her. We're supposed to be a team or whatever. 
Saving Kirsty isn't team business for Tiffany, Theo. It's personal. Believe me, I can relate. Jeeves is rotating the ring on his finger. But I know it hurt your feelings when Tiffany ran off without you, Theo, but we've got more important business we need to talk about. Specifically, what are we going to do now? Maybe Tiffany will come back with Kirsty. Maybe she'll come back empty-handed. Maybe she won't come back at all. Whichever way, we're on a slippery slope here. And we have been since the Church of Lost Salvation. Or even earlier, when we fought that Eremite. When I joined you people, your missions were strictly breaking and entering, stealing the Martians' devices. Then that turned into murder. And then demon fighting and, most recently, harrowing hell. To help the Cenobites, the enemy? We only did that because Demore's leading the Cenobites now. He's... he was an ally, Jeeves interjects with Norton. And we got these great hell-proof talismans out of it. Rajiv, we chose the devil we know rather than our enemy's enemy. But where does that stop? With all of us becoming Cenobites and trying to change hell from within, like Kirsty did? We know how well that worked out for her. Sharing a cell in hell with Elliot Spencer, her worst enemy. We see someone approaching Demur's office. And as they get closer, they pull a puzzle box out. And inside the room, it goes dark. Uh, bloody hell... Uh, maybe there's just an electrical problem, Norton tries to reassure the group. But that same corner of the office, where the portal has been opened so many times before, begins to glow, the dimensional gateway activating. If only, somebody's opening a hell portal, but who? Maybe it's Damore or, or Tiffany. What if it's not? Norton gets out a gun. Sure wish we had that knife that actually kills demons. As the portal opens up, they all look on, and Theo simply says, Oh. I was actually right. So, why don't either of you look happy? Kirsty and Tiffany walk through the portal. Tiffany replies, There's been a bit of a problem in hell, Kirsty continues. We think you should see it. No. Excuse me? We just harrowed hell. And Theo nearly got killed. Because it's hell. It's actually fucking hell. You people think just because you've waltzed in and out of there, with life and limb intact before, you're always going to be able to. Jeeves, the man who is back from the dead, steps in. Not all of us got out with life and limb. That's right. Have you all forgotten what happened the first time this group actually fought a demon? Rajiv died. But Damore brought him back. And I'd love to show him my gratitude for that. Rajiv died and went to hell. Got tortured by Cenobites and now he has to feed on people to stay alive. If we keep taking stupid risks, that could happen to any of the rest of us. Or something even worse. Kirsty walks up to Norton. You're Norton, right? Damore's old secret agent buddy. You've never lost a loved one to the Cenobites, have you? No. Then try to picture what it's like to lose your father, your lover, and lots of your friends to them, like I have. Or your mother, to one of their servants, like Tiffany did. Or your wife, like Rajiv. Picture that. And then try to understand why we'd give anything to fight hell. Yeah, you've given up a lot. You gave up your humanity and became hell's high priestess in some half-cocked scheme for revenge. Just by existing, you make my point better than I ever could. Suicide is no part of valour, discretion is. If you all want to kill yourselves because you've got nothing left to live for. Norton walks out the door as he finishes his sentence. I can't stop you, but I'm not going to help you do it. And Kirsty 
walks through the portal to hell. Come on, we've already wasted enough time here. Rajiv following, turning back for Theo. Theo, you coming? Ah, fuck you, Norton. You better not be right. We cut now to hell. A circle of hell, anyway. Elliot Spencer! Just leg it, please. This is hardly the place for Christian names. To whom do I speak? I am the Sibyl of Abaddon. Your lord speaks through me. That's your lord above us. The mighty Abaddon, angel of the bottomless pit. What does he wish to say to me? Our lord wishes to convey his pleasure that you have joined our righteous cause. His pleasure? It's difficult to express our lord's thoughts in terms you would understand. Pleasure is the closest approximation. His pleasure. That's all. If you'll excuse me, I have a war to begin. Abaddon also has a message for you. Unless you do something about her, curse the cotton will be the ruin of us all. And now in another circle of hell, Harry de Moore speaks. He communes. This is ridiculous. I'm the Pontifex. I'm Hell's High Priest. How am I supposed to do my job if Leviathan doesn't tell me anything? <sighs> Don't be presumptuous, de Moore. Our Lord tells you what needs to be known. When it needs to be known. Leviathan doesn't tell me shit, but that doesn't mean I haven't figured it out. This is all about the whole Elliot Spencer tour between Earth and the Labyrinth, isn't it? I was made Pontifex to lead the invasion of Earth. Oh, Damore, you are choir renowned in hell as a detective. I am disappointed to learn that your reputation is unfounded. What do you mean? You are to lead a war, yes, but the field of battle will not be Earth. Come, Pontifex, and listen, as I answer the questions you've pondered for so long. What, what is it? No idea. I wonder where it leads. When Spencer and I broke out of the prison, Leviathan had us in. It just tore open. Tiffany, Kirsty, Theo, and Rajiv are staring at the pit in hell. And a voice comes out and answers it. The Oubliette. Kirsty quickly turns round. Demore. The Abyss. The Bottomless Pit. Ruled by Abaddon the Destroyer. Why didn't you tell us this before? Harry Demore is being carried in on a throne, and the Cenobite Horde follows him. I didn't know before. Turns out there's a whole other level of hell under the labyrinth, full of demons and lost souls, the victims of the sin of fury. Theo quickly steps up, being concerned now. Sounds, uh, cheerful. So the oubliettes open now. Uh, what happens next? Harry de Moore merely points. That as giant insect demons fly up through the oubliette. Whoa, what the fuck are those? Legionnaires, the demons of the oubliette. Supposedly, they're the cherubim, the second highest order of angels, who sided with the old one during the war in heaven. If you believe any of that. They're, um, they're coming this way. Theo, getting scared now. Female Cenobite standing next to him, dagger drawn. Of course they are, Theo. What do you think is happening here? As Harry de Moore gets up from his throne. And wields a flag. 
It's war! As the Cenobites charge in, Theo shocked. Tiffany just concerned. Rajiv wondering what the hell to do. Uh, I think we should go, yeah, fast. Whoa. Come, sister. We must all defend the realm. A Cenobite drags Kirsty away. Kirsty! Take my. No! Not again! And there were three. The Legionnaires drop down. One faces Tiffany. Its cloven hooves like a horse. Its red body, a cross between a dragonfly and scorpion, leading to a demonic face. Get behind me. Oh, please don't get killed. Tiffany draws the dagger. The Legionnaire bows, ready to strike with its stinger. And as it swoops down, Tiffany wields the dagger. And just as before, the stinger can't breach the talisman. The shield comes up. Tiffany gets knocked back. Tiff, I'm fine. It just knocked me down. Rajiv runs in. Sod it. We wonder exactly what it is he's trying to do. But he runs in. He grabs one of the cloven feet and begins to try to drain it and succeeds. The demon force within the Legionnaire is sucked out and into Rajiv. His eyes glow green. The stinger comes down, not fully drained. But something is in Rajiv. Jeez, I feel stronger, but it, it hurts. Then we'll do this fast. Tiffany runs in with Rajiv. The stinger comes down. They jump out the way. Jeeves acting as bait. Tiffany runs down the side. Hacks one of the legs off. And as it falls down, Jeeves runs in. Grabs its eyes. As Tiffany hacks off the stinger. Theo walks in. Good, good work guys. I think you got him. Jeeves realises the Legionnaire is still alive. Theo! as it gets up, spitting out some blood. But it's blocked, it's warned off, it's attack, doesn't land. Because Theo is still wearing the talisman as he kisses it. I love this thing. And there, in the fray, a Cenobite gets knocked back into Theo. Oof! The talisman just flies off from around his neck. The Cenobite turns, gets his pike. Ah, look! An enemy of the faith. As he brings the pike down through Theo. The talisman no longer on him. No shield comes up. Blood pours out from his chest. Jeeves runs in. Theo! Rajiv. He's dead, Tiffany. I know, I'm sorry. Battle's over. The Cenobites drove the Legionnaires back. This wave of Legionnaires. Let's find Kirsty and... Get the fuck out of here before more come. Tiffany just shrugs off Theo's death like it's nothing. Rajiv doesn't answer. Tiffany turns back. Rajiv? Rajiv standing there. Back to Tiffany. He's standing over the oubliette. He's had enough. He jumps in. Tiffany can just look and stare. We caught this one invading from above. It's one of Leviathan's damned. It claims it wants to defect. Oh, really? Why on earth would you join us, Rajiv? Simple. The Cenobites took everything I've ever cared for. Damore made me a monster. And you're... My enemy's enemy. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Mm, but probably an irrelevant one. Yes, shame it wasn't Tiffany who defected. Or Kirsty. Indeed. I've been doing some thinking on that matter. Abaddon wants a failsafe against Kirsty's interference. There's someone I'd like you to find. Butterfield scurries off. Come on, we're moving you. And if you're lucky, soon 
you'll be reunited with your daughter. And there, in shock and horror, it's Kirsty's father, skinless. Kirsty! We're in hell. We see the aftermath of the legionnaires. Blood and guts everywhere. The Cenobites are down, but so are the followers of Abaddon. Kirsty! We see Kirsty, former hell priest, removing a spear or a pike from one of the legionnaires. Kirsty! You're okay. I was worried. We see Tiffany embrace Kirsty. She runs in. Me too. When we got separated like that and then the battle. Where are your friends? Did you all get separated too? Tiffany steps back. I think... I think Rajiv defected. What? He jumped in the hole to Abaddon's hell, Kirsty. I don't think it was a suicide attempt. What about your other friend? Tiffany walks off. Theo's dead. A Cenobite killed him. Oh god, Tiffany, I'm so sorry, was it? I don't think Damore wants any of us dead, but the other Cenobites sure do. But what I want to know right now is, what are these things? She steps on one of the Legionnaires. And there, answering the question, is Harry Damore. They're Legionnaires of Abaddon. Demons serving the Lord of the Hell of Fury. We fought Abaddon's demons already, Damore. You did? Kirsty says. Tiffany, what we fought before were spies and low-level soldiers in Abaddon's army. These are his shock troopers. They're much worse. Yeah, we noticed that. So why didn't you tell us this before? Kirsty demands. Because it turns out Leviathan's only been sharing Hell's knowledge with me on a need-to-know basis. So... What are you going to do about these legionnaires? Harry Damore, the new Hell Priest, walks up and down looking at his soldiers. We invade Abaddon's Hell. I think that's why Leviathan's been building this army. Which is a relief since I used to think Leviathan was going to invade Earth. He stops and turns. So, you in? Kirsty turns to Tiffany. Uh, if you're coming, go get yourself some wings. Why? Because there's no solid ground in the oubliette. Everything's in freefall. You'll need wings to get around. So, then, what am I supposed to do? Tiffany asks. Stay here. There's no place for you in this fight, unless you want to become a Cenobite too. Uh, no. Jesus, Damore. Don't lynch me for being practical. Tiffany, you're in the middle of a demon war. All being human gets you on a battlefield in hell is killed. We go in ten minutes. Whatever you're doing, you better do it fast. Harry walks off, continuing to survey his Cenobite army. Kirsty, Tiffany, look at one another. We pan out. We see Kirsty wearing wings. The wings go through the shoulder blade and into the clavicle. Those look like they hurt. That's because they do. You're going to be okay while I'm gone. I've got my hell-proof talisman and my demon-killing knife. I'll be fine. I wish you were coming. Demore's leaving Spencer's ex in charge. Kirsty stares at the female Cenobite. Someone needs to stay and watch her anyway. She's helped me a lot in the past. She's a Cenobite. No offence. Who knows where her loyalties actually lie. And in that instant, the High Priest of Hell summons his army. Alright, let's move out. Points to the female. And remember, while I'm gone, don't throw any parties. As he jumps down. And there, in freefall, Kirsty speaks to Demore leaving her in charge of the labyrinth. That's a lot of responsibility. You sure you can trust her that much? No idea, but that's an improvement on all the other Cenobites. Them, I know I can't trust. 
Your orders, sister. We hold here as our pontifex commanded. But sister, he is pontifex. It is not our role to... <coughs> and in that moment, a Lamartian's device is activated. Sister! A Lamartian device calls. What exquisite timing. You two see that our new guest is properly restrained, and then report back. But a voice interjects. We know this voice. No, priestess. This time, the box calls for you. It's Leviathan. My, my lord Leviathan, I am honoured that you would choose to speak to me. This guest will be of prime importance in the days to come. It falls on you to welcome him into our care yourself. And in that moment, we see a figure walking through the threshold of hell. Finally. It's Edgar, the labyrinth. I thought I'd never get back here. Now, where's Kirsty? Looking for your lost love, Edgar Boyle. Here, allow me to take you to her. Femo Cenobite summons the chains. And we cut now to the oubliette. Cenobites in freefall. Kirsty looking on. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome to... Harry cuts in. The oubliette. Prison for Lord Abaddon and his legionnaires and place of punishment for the sinners who couldn't contain their fury during a life. It's so different from the labyrinth. Turns out, the various hells are all very different from each other. Damnation isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. And in that moment, we see some legionnaires. Heads up! Here comes... Wait. What is that? Damore looks. It can't be. He looks closer. Rajiv? Damore. What? What did they do to you? Only what I asked. What you... How could you ask them to make you a monster? They made me strong. The rest of it, well, there weren't a lot of options. What? Damore, stop talking, we're at war. Kirsty butts in her spear. Narrowly missing Rajiv. Rajiv snaps back with his stinger, but then Kirsty blocks it, using the weight of the strike, counters with a kick to Rajiv's back, and he goes flying. Kirsty now in pursuit. And as Kirsty goes to deliver the final blow, Damore steps in. No! Damore! You don't get to kill him. He was an ally. He made his choice. He chose his side. These are the consequences of becoming a monster. A monster, Harry Damore retorts. You mean like... Becoming Pontifex of Hell? Fine, Kirsty says defiantly. Get out of here. And pray we don't run into each other again. But in that moment, Harry Damore surveys the battlefield. And realises something. This is... Too easy... Easy? This is what you call easy? Think about it. There were more legionnaires in the invasion force. We fought off in the labyrinth than we've seen here. Their home turf. Something's going on. Well, you're the detective. You think everything's a trap. In my life, so far everything is. We need to check out this gyroscope. Make sure there aren't more legionnaires clinging to the underside. They descend once more. I really don't like this. As they descend, the bodies in Abaddon's hell scream, Help me! Please, you've got her! Damore? And as they reach the underside of the gyroscope, they see hundreds, no, thousands of legionnaires. Damore! Curse thee. What are we... What are we going to do? 
the gravity of the situation, the battle of hells, dawns on them. And there, among the legionnaires, we see their leader. Ha 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 ha! Simple. You're all going to die. It's Elliot Spencer. Demore first. He flies in, takes Demore down, slams him into the floor. But Demore summons his barbed wire. Wire. Really, Demore. I expected more. Spencer doesn't believe this could harm him. Perhaps Leviathan should have chosen a better pont. Ah! It does. It does strike him. The barbed wire rips at his flesh. And in his anger, his fury, he descends, ready to strike. But Kirsty interjects, brings her spear down. Cotton! That was the last time you meddle in my affairs. You're next to die. Thanks for that. No time. Look around. Oh no. I've botched this all so badly. I really thought Leviathan wanted to invade Earth. Through the portal Spencer made. I never thought. Damore, snap out of it. You know what we have to do. Retreat! Back to the labyrinth. Harry Damore summons the Cenobites away. They must flee. The Legionnaires are too much for them. Their army decimated. And as they fly up out of the oubliette. My lord, why have you... Curse thee. What? There were too many. Way too many. Where's the rest of our brothers and sisters? This is the rest. Demore, there aren't enough Cenobites here. You're going to get overrun. There aren't enough Cenobites, period. There's no cavalry to call. We're all fucking... Oh, fuck. Here they come. Everybody. Shit. The Legionnaires fly up out of the oubliette. Turn them back, Demore says. We can't let them get... But then, he stops. Ah, uh, they just start flying. What the fuck? Do they not care that we're here? Kirsty notices too, and replies, it looks like they're headed for the pit. But why? What's out there besides millions of flayed sinners? Oh, fuck me. It dawns on Harry. What? Demore, what is it? Remember what I said about the portal to Earth that Elliot Spencer tore open? Abaddon doesn't care about the labyrinth or Leviathan. He's trying to invade Earth. And with that we see the Legionnaires fly through the portal. And they start ripping and tearing soldiers apart. Limbs, flesh, guts, entrails, all over the earth. With fatalities, apparently numbering in the thousands, we open to a TV screen, a news report. We see Abaddon's merciless legionnaires destroying Indian soldiers. For those just joining us, there has been another unexplained incident in the rural region northeast of Calcutta, India, site of last year's purported zombie outbreak. The event last year was claimed to be a publicity stunt by a movie studio, but with new footage showing the Indian armed forces in combat at the site, that explanation is now clearly in question. We see Norton in Harry Damore's old office. He gets up after watching the news report, walks over to a wall in the corner, removing a painting, and there, hidden behind it, is the safe with all of Hell's gateway keys, the lament configurations, the puzzle pieces, if you'll excuse me, Carol, the question here is, what the hell is going on? And we see Norton as he removes one of Hell's puzzles. We cut to Hell. We see Cenobites, Kirsty, Tiffany, Harry Damore, and Female. The soldiers of Leviathan, the inhabitants of the Labyrinth. 
The portal garrison is in danger of falling, Pontifex. Then we're going to end up swimming in Legionnaires. Don't let that happen. Demore, those Legionnaires are on Earth. You need to send Cenobites there to help. We don't have enough to spare. Then, then make more Cenobites. Out of who? We're running out of suitable damned souls to convert. Unless... Harry Damore looks at Tiffany. Anybody here wants to volunteer? Would you stop with that? Tiffany is not becoming a Cenobite. Recruits have to come from somewhere, Kirsty. We need help. Harry Damore walks off. We aren't going to win this war. The gravity of the situation dawns on Kirsty and Tiffany. She punches a wall. Damn it! If only I had a Martian puzzle. I thought they didn't work in hell. They don't. I mean, solving one in hell doesn't open a portal to Earth, but if I had one, there's an ally I could contact, an advisor. It might be able to help. Kirsty thinks back to the time she opened the puzzle piece. And that fractured being, that deity from another world. And Tiffany pulls out a puzzle box. Well, in that case, where'd you get that? Demore. It's how I summon him. Tiffany. That's great. Finally, something goes our way. This will only take a minute. She begins pulling the puzzle pieces out. My lord! A Cenobite runs in. This one insisted on speaking to you, and... And I'm protected, so they couldn't stop me. Norton walks in. Norton! Uh, hello, Tiffany. Theo's dead. Things are really, really bad. She embraces him. God damn it. Poor kid. Where's Rajiv? Norton. Glad you could make it. We need troops. At the portal garrison. God damn it, Damore! Do you even hear me talking? You need to put troops in India. The battle of morals between Hell's current Hell Priest and the former Kirsty rages on. We fight a war on two fronts. That's going to weaken us. Oh, suddenly you're a soldier. Better now than never. I've already fucked this up enough. Oh, so this is about your guilt then? Because in that case, take a minute and think about how much more guilty you're going to feel about all the people dying in India because of you. Not Cenobites, not damned souls, innocent people. Take a couple of Cenobiums, whoever you can find, and try not to get yourself slaughtered needlessly, alright? Harry Damore relinquishes some power to Kirsty once more. But before she can go, Female walks in. Sister, before you go, I have a sight to show you. Everyone's leaving for the portal to Earth without me. This really better be. She walks up to a chamber and looks through. Oh no. It's Edgar. He's chained up. Edgar, poor sweet Edgar. He lived. Spencer didn't actually kill him. And you didn't tell me. Your lover truly died, Kirsty Cotton. His innards spilled by Spencer. Then how? How else, Kirsty Cotton? Leviathan's will. For such as us, death is not always the end. Have you not wondered how I could be here when so long ago you saw Chenard kill me? But why? Why bring Edgar back and why now? You may think me heartless, Kirsty Cotton, but I am merely a servant of Leviathan's will. And should you wish your lover return to your arms once this war is through, you will also serve Leviathan's will. There, in India, the Legionnaires are laying waste to the soldiers. But Tiffany, Norton, and the Cenobite Horde have made their way through the portal. Remember, our talismans only protect us against hell. So, 
don't get shot by the Indian army. Roger that. We see Cenobites picking up boulders and hacking away at the Legionnaires. Get out of here, Norton says as he hacks one of the Legionnaires' heads off. You've got to. He realises they don't speak English. Damn it. Does anybody here speak English? As one rears up, ready to strike him from behind. But he gets hit back. Ah. It's Rajiv. Hello, Rajiv. You, uh, really should stop? Turning up with a different, monstrous form? Serving one hell or another? I agree. I take it you defected to Abaddon's hell and now... And now... I'm defecting again, because they're attacking my homeland. Yes. More the merrier now. And there now, Rajiv, once human, turned zombie, turned Abaddon legionnaire, and Norton, dive into the fray. Let's get to work. Norton runs in with his scythe. We see Cenobites summoning chains in Rajiv, hand to hand with a legionnaire. A stinger comes down on Norton, but the shield goes up, and then he swipes, taking off the legionnaire's leg. Thank God for the talismans, right? Thank God, Tiffany says. But there, from above, a shadow casts itself over Norton. A legionnaire is dropping boulders, and just like that, one lands on Norton. Norton! Tiffany runs in, grabs his hand, and goes limp. He's dead. Tiffany looks up. A legionnaire is preparing to drop a, a wall on top of her. Tiffany, is he? He's dead, Rajiv. You bloody wanker! Rajiv flies in, starts beating the living hell out of one of the legionnaires. But then a horde of them turn on him. And in an instant, he's destroyed. Bits of his guts have been torn out his head cut off. Oh god damn it, not you too, Rajiv. Tiffany runs in. The bodiless head of Rajiv and his final words. It's okay, Tiffany. I'm I'm ready for all of this to be over. And And then he's gone. Tiffany walks off, leaving the sight of her murdered friends. And there, now, we see the battlefield. Legionnaires piled up, Cenobite bodies strewn all over the place, humans caught in the fray, and Kirsty standing there, hand to hand with a Legionnaire. I don't know about you, but I can keep doing this all night. She runs in, and then a voice. Watch it, Kirsty. It's Tiffany. Tiffany, glad you're okay. Where have you been? Something is different about her. Something is ominous. You know, she runs in. Two massive blades. Busy. Oh no, 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 not you too. Tiffany. Now turned Cenobite. Her skull cut in two. The top part capped, removed, her brain exposed. Metal instruments through her face, keeping the flayed flesh up above from her skull. No, no, this can't be, this can't all be. But before Kirsty can finish her sentence, she's kicked in the skull. <clears throat> and as Kirsty starts to come round, she sees a familiar face looking down at her. It's Elliot Spencer, the former Hell Priest Pinhead. Uh, Garten, welcome to Abaddon's hell. Spencer, of course it's you. This isn't about you and me, Cotton. Not this time. We know Leviathan has your lover as hostage. I've been instructed to make sure you get a message. What message? Don't cross Abaddon, or else. Really, Spencer? All these years, all these fights, 
and you still come at me with these hollow threats. Oh, Cotton, we aren't threatening you. He holds out a hand, beckons his legionnaires over. They have the skinned body of Kirsty Cotton's father. We're threatening your family. Kirsty. Daddy? Jesus, Kirsty, what did these monsters do to you? They didn't. It wasn't. It's a long story. Spencer, you fucking lied to me. You told me. I told you that your father was not in Leviathan's hell. That was perfectly true. Because he was here, in the hell of fury. Your old man had a temper, after all. Now, if you ever want the chance to tell Daddy your long story... What? I'll what? What the fuck does everyone want from me? Come on, Cotton. Haven't you learned yet? Nobody's going to tell you why your life is the way it is. She reaches in her pocket and pulls out the puzzle box Tiffany gave her earlier. Ah! A La Martian device! Stop her! Hurry! Before she escapes! Butterfield screams. She won't. The Toymaker's portals don't work when you are already inside hell. Trust me, Pinhead says with such confidence as she begins to complete the puzzle piece. She's not going. The light shines on her face. Anywhere. But the earth shatters around her, and there she finds her, with the old familiar face that helped her before. Welcome back. I... I don't know who you are or what you are. But you've seemed to help me in the past, and now... Now I could really use some help. I have tried to assist you twice before. Each time you failed to understand. And your lack of understanding made all things worse. For you. For your friends. For your world. I can help you one last time. But that is all. Are you saying this is all my fault? The situation you are in is exactly what my intervention was hoped to avoid. So yes, this is your fault. How dare you? Do you even know what I've been through? You must listen. There is time for nothing else. Here... And hear well. What has been done cannot be undone entirely. But a garment once ripped can be mended. You understand. Understand? I don't understand any of this. Everyone's acting like I'm important here. Leviathan, Abaddon, you. But no one will tell me why. You are. Important. The Hell Lords don't wish you to learn why. And it's forbidden for me to say. Thanks for wasting my time then. Is there anything you can do? I can give you this. You will need it to do what heaven and earth need you to do. The deity pulls out a ball of flesh. What is it, a weapon? All things are weapons when used as weapons. What do I do with it? When the time comes to use it, I can only pray that you'll understand that for yourself. And there we're back in Abaddon's hell. Kirsty Cotton stands there with the device. You see... The Martians' devices do nothing in hell. The arrogance of Elliot Spencer pours off him. Then tell me why opening them 
is forbidden in hell, Spencer. He can't answer. Enough stalling, Cotton. What's it going to be? He reaches out, grabs Kirsty's father by the throat. Your father or your lover? I don't know. We're in Abaddon's hell. Butterfield stares, leers at Kirsty. Well, we're waiting on you, Kirsty. Will you follow Abaddon's will? But if I don't do what Leviathan wants from me, whatever that is, he's going to kill Edgar. Quite a Sophie's choice, isn't it? Pinhead chimes in. Broken eggs and omelettes, child. Who will you choose? Your lover or your father? What does Abaddon want? Good question, Butterfield. Abaddon wants you to sit this one out. We put you in a cell until this is all over. And you don't try to break out of it. You want me to let Abaddon's army invade Earth? And if you so much as lift a finger to stop us, your father will suffer for it. Yes. And there, Kirsty, she makes a decision. Oh, Daddy. I'm so sorry. And she takes off. She flies upwards. But she's got someone with her. Butterfield. Now wrapped in her cape. What are you waiting for? Help me! And as she ascends to the circle of desire, Leviathan's hell, Pinhead just bursts into laughter. <laughs> Legget, aren't you going to order us to go after them? Abaddon's demons are confused. Why bother? The lawyer and your brothers who gave chase are already dead. See? Bodies start falling. You're... You're just going to let her escape? Shouldn't we do something? Oh, Pinhead says as he stares at Kersey's father. I am. A demon chimes in. Have you gone entirely mad? Is the power of fury too intoxicating for you? We need this wretch intact as a bargaining chip. You're lucky I'm in a good mood, soldier. We've seen how little worth this one has as a bargaining chip alive. But with Kirsty grieving and blaming herself for his death, he may prove a useful distraction at some crucial moment. And there we see the skinless body of Kirsty's father, his back snapped, his head between his legs. Come, come along, men. We're needed in the labyrinth. Why? Please, can't you smell it? The end times are upon us. Now in the labyrinth we see Kirsty. Kirsty Cotton with that ball of flesh. Or is it centipedes, millipedes? That that deity gave her. So it's important... I just wish I knew what it was, or what I'm supposed to do with it. Know what I wish for? <laughs> that you've paid a bit more attention to what this guardian angel is actually saying to you. What's your problem, Damore? Kirsty, someone was trying to help us, and you couldn't even be bothered to listen closely. How are we supposed to solve this puzzle without all the pieces? What do you want from me? You have no idea what it cost me to bring this back here. Oh, 
you're having a hard day. So's everyone. It's the end of the world. Pull it together. So, one more time, Harry de Moore says. Your guardian angel said, what's done can't be undone, right? And then something about a torn garment, yeah. Oh, Harry has a, an epiphany. Of course, duh. What? It's going to be dangerous, obviously. And I can't come with you. I need to lead the war effort here. What? What is it? So, they only need guards, but there's a complication there if any of the Cenobites find out what they're doing. Demore, you want to share what you figured out with the rest of us who aren't professional detectives? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> it's the oldest trick in the book. And we cut forward now. Kirsty is with Tiffany. What do you think, Tiffany? Is Demore crazy? No, I don't think so. What he said, it does make sense. We see Kirsty and Tiffany as we pan out. All right then, let's do this. Surrounded by a Cenobite guard in the pit. Nice. Nice of the Hellions to actually keep their distance for once, but kind of suspicious. Kirsty, listen. I know you don't understand why I became a Cenobite. Tiffany, look, I, I get it. You did what you thought was good for the world over what you thought was good for you. I get it. And now we're here, as they reach the portal to Earth, with Abaddon's legionnaires standing proud, ready to strike. And as they get closer and closer to the portal, the inhabitants of the pit strike. To trap, of course. They start lashing and hacking. But the legionnaires fly in as well. The curse is quick. She turns, she realises. And her blade comes down, cutting one of the legionnaires in half. And we see Tiffany summoning chains, bodies being lacerated. But sadly, the legionnaires have got the best of some of the Cenobites. One bites down on one's skull, while simultaneously another is having his head caved in by a Cenobite. It's bloody carnage. And Tiffany says, is, is, is that all the legionnaires they had guarding the portal to Earth? Looks like. You ready? Yes. Tiffany says, running at one of the Cenobites with her blades. Her blades come down and the arm comes off a Cenobite. Tiffany skewers another. But the Cenobite Tiffany is fighting, fights back and cuts at her arm. Ah! Ah! C Tiffany! Kirsty shouts, but Tiffany is quick. She cuts the head off the Cenobite. Are you okay? What happened to your talisman? The Cenobites took it while I was being converted into one of them. Oh no. More Cenobites run in, ready to face Tiffany and Kirsty. Don't worry about it. I've got this. Do what you need to do. And there we hear Harry Damore once more. It's the oldest trick in the book. Think about it. Hell's soldiers come to Earth, and you've got to stop them. But stop them how? As we see Tiffany summoning the ball, the orb that her guardian angel gave her, and it floats into the sky. By closing the portal they came through. Harry Damore's words ring. Our path to Earth, brothers. We must stop them. No. Tiffany cuts his head off. The ball, the orb of flesh, begins to act, reacting to the portal, and then it's gone. And there we see in the labyrinth the legionnaires making their way. Some of the bricks start to fall falling on to some of the legionnaires. Their blood pours out. Kirsty! Tiffany shouts, Ugh! as she starts to disappear. And at the exact same time, so does Elliot Spencer. What now? Mm. And 
there, Leviathan, Lord of the Labyrinth, shows himself to curse thee. Leviathan, my former servant. And at the exact same time, we see that he is talking to Elliot Spencer. I again need your help. You need my help. This is rich. Ying and Yang, Leviathan communes with both at the same time. If unchecked, Abaddon will raise the labyrinth. I am powerless to stop it. I bet it stings you admitting that. I am powerless, true. But you are not. Okay. You open the hellhole into the oubliette. You and curse the carton. This makes you the only ones who can close it. And there, their voices as one. Curse the and Pinhead reply. Why would I help you? You're asking me to join the losing side, and to think I once worshipped you. You're asking me to save you, after all you've done to me, to my family. I do not ask. I present an offer in exchange for closing the hellhole. I will grant you your heart's desire. A boon. Anything in my power to give. Come now. Is that truly so little a thing? To be disregarded so easily? Whilst this is happening, we see Cenobites and Legionnaires fighting Harry de Moore. Well? Looks like this is it. I'm sorry I never got to learn if I can actually trust you, he says female Cenobite, but then part of the labyrinth starts to change to smoke. Harry de Moore notices it's closing, oh thank god it's actually closing the Legionnaires notice too and they quickly try to fly back so they can get home but it's too late. Some are squashed up, enveloped by the labyrinth others are left stranded and those that are left stranded Harry de Moore signals to his Cenobites. Now, brothers and sisters, the Legionnaires are trapped. Kill them now. Kill them before. But something's happening to him. Uh, what the? Ah, uh, fuck. What's? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. The pins are ripping out of his flesh as they float down the labyrinth. That's right, Harry de Moore. I've returned. Pinhead, Elliot Spencer stands before Harry de Moore. Ah! Leviathan's tentacles come down, latching on to Harry. What is this? It's okay, Harry. It's time to go home. After all that, everything that's happened can't believe you agreed to be Leviathan's pet again, Spencer. Hardly a pet, curse thee. Better to reign in hell, as they say. Reigning my ass. You're a puppet, Spencer. Never anything more. This puppet has clipped its strings, child. I did not accept my old role back, but a new one. I am the Labyrinth's Pontifex again, true. But my powers have been increased, both temporally and spiritually. That's all? That's what Leviathan gave you? So you'd close the oubliette? A promotion and a raise? Yes. Just as Leviathan gave all of your humanities back, and gave you safe passage out of hell. But now, you are safely out of hell, and Leviathan's promise to you is fulfilled. 
a sharp reality as the shock hits Kirsty. Pinhead starts to walk through the portal. No. Yes. And he sends hooks on chains straight back through the portal. But they're not meant for Kirsty. They obliterate and decapitate Edgar. Edgar! Spencer, you bastard! I'm gonna fucking kill you! This is it, you're fucking dead! Come now, Kirsty Cotton. Did you truly believe you could steal a happy ending? You. No happy endings, little girl. Only pain. The portal begins to close. Pain eternal. I shall see all of you again very soon. Harry Damore, Kirsty, Tiffany are left there in Harry's old office and Edgar's body and the blood pouring out. 